us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for blessing us to be able to come together as an assembly to conduct the business of this county. Lord, we thank you for the privilege. We thank you for the blessings upon this county, our state, and our nation. Bless now, Lord, all of our deliberations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will call our August the 7th uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, the first item on our agenda would be the approval of the minutes from our July 1st. And I believe the July 15th meeting. Are there any discussions, corrections? be uh, approved as written. Second. There's been a motion that the July 1st and July 15th uh, County Commissioner minutes be approved as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Right. Next item on our agenda will be uh, the adjustments to the agenda, and then we'll have the approval of the agenda. The first adjustment will be item five under administrative reports, item four C. We want to make a four C one uh, to allow for a resolution appointment of our uh, tax assessor. Then, yes. Mr. Chairman, I move that the adjustment to the agenda be approved. Right, we have one more. Yeah, one more. We'll hold the uh, okay. motions. Um, under 5-4-F, on the articles of interest, we'd like to add F-1, which would be the discussion of debt payoff by Commissioner Horror. If there are no other adjustments, we'll entertain a motion for approval of agenda. So moved. Second. Right, so motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay. Thank you. All right. The next item would be our delegations, uh, our citizens' comments. Do we have any? Okay. The first citizen would be um, Mr. Thomas Hill. Ladies and gentlemen, county manager, county commissioners, um, very quickly, I um, want to bring up something very quickly here. Um, last meeting, uh, we went over um, discussion with the Animal Control Committee, and uh, it was said that there would be names that would be available to submit to you all, and I'm ready to submit one name, and perhaps uh, as time goes further, we can submit more. A young lady by the name of Amanda Smith has already turned in her application to you all. Um, I think that she would be a neutral party for uh, both Democrats, Republicans, and uh, citizens alike. Um, so I would highly recommend her name. Um, also, it was mentioned in the last meeting about nuisance laws. Uh, I understand that there's a public hearing going on about this soon. Uh, I wanted to know uh, when specifically would this be coming out? Today. Today. Okay, so it would be an open discussion today then. Yes. Very good. Thank you, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Mr. Doug Bailey. Um, as per your request, Mr. <coughs> Jordan, from the last meeting, I was unavailable at that time to be here uh, as the chairman of the 
Animal Welfare Advisory <coughs> Committee. And so I made myself available today so that if you have any questions or any comments that you'd like to make to me, I am here to answer that. I also have several items that I would like to uh, bring before the board, if possible. So my first thing I would like to do is if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to ask, I'm here to answer those to the best of my ability. All right, I don't know if we have any specific questions. I <coughs> think it did come up in the last meeting uh, that there were some things the committee was asked to do as far as looking uh, over the animal situation in the county. And I think as a board, we kind of uh, reiterated that the objective of the committee was to bring back recommendations to the county and not necessarily take actions That's correct. On, uh, on issues that were in the county. Right. Uh, for the public record, let me make it clear that this board is an ad hoc committee that is assigned the duty of making recommendations to the Board of Commissioners for modifications or changes to the animal control ordinance that is in effect now. It is not our responsibility to do anything other than make recommendations to the board, then the board can either make the changes or not as they deem fit. Uh, I think that's pretty much yes. stated as to what we're, what our uh, situation is. Okay. Uh, that being said, back about a month ago, uh, almost a month ago, a list of recommendations was given to the board by this committee. Uh, and there were seven different uh, things that we had turned in to you guys for your review. And I won't go through all of them because a lot of them are just changes in the wording on the committee on the uh, ordinance, some of the wording. Uh, but so far, uh, I do not know what the status of that review is. Have you guys had a chance to review these recommendations? Uh, we have them in our package, and uh, we will consider whether or not to approve them today. Okay. We'll consult with the county manager, and. Uh, we will determine whether or not we'll approve them. All right. Admitted. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, that being said, also, I did want to bring up a new section that we had talked about in our last meeting. I will give you guys copies of that so that you have it. I refer to the section of the Animal Control Ordinance, Section 316.3, .3, and I will read it for the benefit of the audience. This is the standards for chaining or tethering a dog. No animal may be chained outdoors unattended without a chain or cable designed and placed to prevent choking or strangulation. Such chain or cable or any restraining device shall not be less than 10 feet in length with the area free of obstacles so the animal may have access to food, water, and shelter. A properly fitted collar is required for all tethering. This is the ordinance as it is right now. Uh, one of the recommendations we would like to make is that the board consider either making uh, phone calls or mailings to the county so that everyone is aware of this ordinance and uh, the fact that it is on the books and that it should be enforced. If they're not doing it, then they should be doing it. So it is your recommendation, and this is as the committee or as? From as a committee. All right, that so. the county do a robocall to the right. citizens, informing them of the requirement of tethering. And that's just this requirement from the ordinance. It's not actually, well, I, I guess you can say it's tethering. It's just the fact that uh, 
we want to make sure that people in the county are aware of the fact that this ordinance is on the books and that it uh, can be enforced with a citation and uh, a fine if not followed. Okay. Uh, we seem to have gotten uh, a lot of information that this is not being done. Mm -hmm. And this is a first step towards any further action. Our, our feeling was as a committee was that this standard as it is now is not being done. So we don't want to make a recommendation to modify it until uh, this has been actually done. And then we can proceed forward from that if necessary. Now we have a list of seven recommendations. Yes, sir. And uh, so this would actually be number eight. Yes, sir. That's uh, correct. When we do our uh, right. discussion and deliberation. And that's the reason I brought it up today, okay. so you could cover it today with the other seven. Commissioners, if you all would make a note that that's number eight when we discuss it. Uh, one other thing I did want to bring up before the board. Uh, I have some information that I garnered from the Sheriff's Department. Uh, there had been some discussion and questions at previous meetings as to whether the county was actually enforcing uh, some of these laws and how strictly they were enforcing them. And uh, these are the actual numbers that I received this morning from Ms. Parker. Uh, from the Sheriff's Department. The county in 2013 so far has issued four citations. They have asked the state to give three citations. Now, let me explain, if I may, the reason why they refer, uh, sometimes they refer this to the state. The, the normal procedure when a person is, a complaint has been filed and an officer goes out to verify whether the complaint is accurate or not, the very first thing they do normally is issue a verbal warning. And in most cases, this is sufficient to correct the situation. If not, the second time they go out, they write a written warning. And that written warning can either be a county or a state citation, and it depends on what the charges are. Normally, a county citation is for a minor matter. A state citation would be for something that's a little more uh, serious. And the reason they do that is because the state has the availability, the funds, the people to investigate this a lot more than the county would. Uh, and then if that does not correct the situation, a criminal summons will be issued. The person will be brought into court and uh, on a show cause action in front of a judge and be asked why they haven't remedied this situation. And if uh, the judge so deems they can be fined and in some cases even be in prison depending on how serious the charges are. And that's my understanding of the way the, the law works. Uh, what the committee that the board has put together, our job is to get information and input from all sectors of the county. We have people on the board who are uh, very much animal rights advocates. We have, well, all of us are as far as that goes, but uh, people who are uh, animal rescue people, people who operate shelters. We have uh, a gentleman on there who is a hunter. Uh, I myself at one point in time was a breeder. So we have a, a very good cross section of the community and I feel that we are very much um, a, a cross section, you know, and so it's not like we just have one group on there, and that's the only group that we have. And uh, I thank you for your time. All right. You have any other questions? Go ahead. Questions? Oh, uh, one other thing I just want to bring up. I'm sorry. Tomorrow night we're having our meeting. It is open to the public. Any, anyone can attend. However, you cannot make comments or ask questions, but you can, you can sit there and listen. 
Uh, we have a lady coming in from the United States Humane Society, and what they do is they rescue large animals, such as horses and cows, I guess, whatever, uh, primarily horses, if there's a problem with horses in the area. Uh, the reason we bring them in is because uh, the Tri-County Animal Shelter does not have a facility for large animals. We only have a facility for cats and dogs. And we also have a lady coming in to talk who is the, one of the trainers for a uh, course called Animal Cruelty Investigator. And that is a law enforcement officer within the county who is charged with enforcing these rules and regulations. Uh, and we're trying to set up training with the Sheriff's Department to get uh, an additional officer to, do, to help uh, Mr. Parker do that. So anyone that would like to attend, we'd appreciate you being there. And uh, that's all I have. The board is also asked to come if they would like. All right, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate and that will be time. held where? Tomorrow night at the in the conference room. Yeah. In the conference room. Seven Thank you. Seven o'clock. Thank you much. <coughs> Next citizen will be Mr. Dan Lane. <coughs> Some of this what I may talk won't talk about. It. May have been discussed while I wasn't here. Arthritis took its toll on me, so I had to miss several meetings. But there's been a lot of rumors about a uh, wastewater spray field. And to go back a little bit, uh, I know Graham and uh, your former uh, manager talked to my, our nephew about Granddad on the farm way back. And they talked to I think quite an extent, and then all of a sudden they want to charge him for the water that he spray on his crop. Well, with the hundred pot swamp running out of the whole way side of that farm, he got plenty of water, it'd be foolish for him to pay for water that he had plenty of access to already. Uh, but a lot of the things that, you know, about where to put a spray field, I've been told that one of the commissioners may approach my, my nephew about his farm and made an offer. Only 11% of what another farm had offered him for his farm. So to get land, you've got to be realistic. And uh, to pay for it. And another thing I have heard is they have talked about the Cox track, which was part of my granddaddy's land and all. Uh, I, we, well, that was in woods when I was growing up. The right side of it was uh, cleared land. I know how tight that land was. So you need to be very careful as to what land you get, whether it will take care of the water. And uh, you got your hands full and picking the right place. To me, the most ideal place will be right straight across the swamp from the treatment plant. On that is woods land. But I think its nature would be much better suited than anything else that's close by that's not in farmland. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. <coughs> All right, our next uh, citizen would be uh, Langston, Tommy Langston. Good morning, everybody. Uh, what I will speak about is, I guess we all are aware of that the fact that the library that we have that is out there at the Commerce Center, and now that we have it and the grant is no longer funded, I would like for the Commission to sort of explain to the public as to how we are going to go about the funds. Is that going to come out of the taxpayer pocket by raising taxes to help pay for it, which I know we got to do something. Well, I would like somebody to speak on that issue. Uh, if not today, bring it back at the next meeting about the library. I have never been against the library, just like Mr. John Hall was never against the library. But uh, I think that 
we need to talk about it more in depth to let the citizen just kind of know what is going on. So are you asking uh, that the county provide what is the operational cost for the library in the following years now that it's built? Um, along with that, also I'm asking the question uh, about the funds that since we are no longer getting the, any type of grant money for it, then what are we going to do about the operation of it, grass being cut and everything else that goes along with it? How are we going to maintain it? Because grass is taking over out there, and uh, what are we going to do about the maintenance of the building itself? Because Mr. Dan Bazemore stood up and gave us uh, a documentary of how we could build that same library with a lot less cost. He stood up in this same courtroom, and, I, and none of the commission, in my opinion at that time, listened to him. And we could have been in less debt today than what we are if we had listened to what he had said. I just want to be clear so that, you know, we can provide information that, that uh, the operational cost of what it takes to maintain the library and how the county intends to maintain uh, the lawn and the areas around the library. Yes, sir. Uh, and where those funds will be coming from. Right. And also, since we have zoned it to commercial and we don't have anything out there for us commercial to show other than the credit union what are we what other business is talking about coming or we know that's going to come out there to help support the county financially i think some of those things are are kind of closed session issues um, because you can't really reveal uh, business investment intentions until there's an, an actual um, agreement taking place so, I mean, we can provide you with what information we can, but the county manager certainly will be able to address the first three issues. And if there's some other things we can uh, let you know about, let the county know about as far as what businesses are committed, we'll be happy to do that as well. Okay, another, thank you. Another question too, please. Uh, since now we have the prison camp, from what I've been told in the county, uh, what are we planning on doing with that? Are we going to take that, my suggestion rather, to take that and have it so it could be a place that we could house the uh, sheriff's department for as people that commit crimes instead of we let it go to other counties? We could have it here for this county. We also could create some jobs if we take that place and turn it into a facility like that. All right. Um, be great if you would uh, kind of document those ideas and pass them along to us. And, I'd be uh, more than glad to. And uh, but unless the commissioners have some comments, we'll, the county manager will take a look at these, and we should have those available probably at our next meeting. Uh, well, uh, another thing we could do. One other thing, please. This is last. Um, the we might be able to take the library that we just built and it might be a good idea to let the sheriff's department have it and bring the library back here into the town of Gatesville because I don't see what that's going to generate anything <coughs> to help the county yeah. in my opinion all right thank you and if you'll get those uh, things to us we'll certainly take a look at it last but least mm -hmm. uh, when Mr. Chapel was here, Mr. Jordan, this question directed to you, you made a statement that he was doing a great job. Well, if we had to compare him to Mr. John Minahall, I know it's sometimes you should not talk about people behind their back, but you can talk about people in front of their face. Uh, how would you compare the two? In my opinion, there's no comparison. I'm glad that we got him here when we do the comparison of the two. So uh, you said that Mr. Chapel was doing a great job. I have never, in my estimated, found out how you could say that about him from what I've seen him do the whole time he was here compared to the short time that Mr. Menhall was here. It's just like day and night in my opinion. And that's my opinion. All right. 
Okay, thank you much. All right, that's the um, last item on our agenda for citizens' comments. Um, the next delegation will be announced delegation, Ms. Reba Green Holly, North Carolina St uh, Extension Office. brought before you our 4-H group that has been working on a grant that we had called the North Carolina um, New Generation Project where we had a grant and you heard me talk about it several times for one year to look at young people engaging them in the community and giving them the skills needed to start understanding how county operates why it operates the way it does, what the issues are, and then for them to actually plan a project uh, that was something that they would spearhead, uh, implement, evaluate, accomplish, and also bring some something back to the county. So they've been working all year, and one of their final activities is to share with the powers that be what they've been doing and the outcome of that project. And this project has been a collaboration between Cooperative Extension and Gates County School System. And we have Adrian Bradley here representing the Gates County School System. And they've been to Raleigh and made their presentation and um, saw the other youth groups that were also funded to see what they were doing and interact with them. And so now they're going to share with you briefly uh, what they've been doing in the county. And they'll introduce themselves when they come up. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, my name is Junae Nelson and I am an upcoming freshman at Shaw University. <clears throat> we are part of the rural youth leaders called 4-H Plus, positive leaders unifying success. Others on the team, please may you stand. Every year, rural co counties are losing their most valuable resources, young adults like us. We graduate from high school and we leave to go to college or move to a more urban area, only never to come back or we remain in the community and fail to become engaged in community activities. The purpose of the NC Rural Center grant that 4-H received was to support a project which had the following goals. One, to teach youth leadership skills. Two, to teach youth about the county and three, to allow youth to design a project that would be beneficial to young adults in the county. Along with our leadership workshops, we spent considerable time reviewing needs, assets, and designing a project. Utilizing various needs assessments allowed youth to learn about the county. The 2012 Legislative Youth Summit, which involves Gates County Youth, reported youth needed more programs and activities that targeted them. Gates County housing needs assessed assessments showed many families lived in substandard housing environments that impact their quality of life. Growing Gates Tourism Strategic Planning Report indicated that, county ne that the county needed to develop tourism sites that would help with economic development. Outcomes resulted in youth gaining insight on the limited resources of the county, its assets, and how things operate. It also allowed us to exercise our leadership skills as teams and make difference and make a difference in our community. Hello. My Hi. name is Christopher Ashley and I am a rising sophomore at Gates County High School. Our project had three components. Gates County Youth Explosion Youth Conference, Day of Caring, and National Historical Sign. This provided workshops covering youth issues, guest speakers, and entertainment, followed with festival activities and DJ during the afternoon. The Day of Caring projects identified by agencies involved youth doing community service work one evening after school. National Historical Sign signature was purchased to document the, red, the historic Red Grove Reeds Grove, 
Fresno School as one of the tourism attractions in this county. A homecoming event is being planned. We hope the project will be sustained through the leadership of Cooperative Extension, faculty and youth development work in helping us to continue to gain leadership skills and implementing, implementing projects as Gates County Youth Ambassadors. We also select other organizations and funding sources to assist the, by supporting various projects that we determine can make a difference in our community. Good morning, my name is Xavier Roscoe and I'm a rising senior at Gates County High School. The plus, positive, when you think positive, you think plus. When you think plus, you think addition. Well, our group consists of teenagers plus hard work plus heart and gave us a sum of an explosion. We put together an event to remember with great speakers and fun and games. You can't go wrong, so our equation equals satisfaction. Leaders, our group is made up of leaders, goal setting, mission accomplishing leaders. We all took forth our responsibility and did what we had to do to get the job done. Together as one, we lead our county into a day of fun. We gave back to our community, hoping the high school students bring smiles to their faces. Unifying, we were unifying all youth interested to do something different. We didn't just stop at the day of fun, we also gave back to the elderly and our friends at the public library. Making sure we gave back to the whole community, together in unity, free of charge to all friends who be fools to charge gratuity. Success. Our success can be sustained. A positive day full of smiles. Negativity was completely abstained. A beautiful picture was painted. New, pe new people were acquainted. Not a soul was found complaining because we achieved success. Thank you. Are there any questions? Well, thank you very much. And uh, we're very proud of uh, young people becoming active in uh, public events and trying to make the county better. Let's give them a hand. There were a total of 16 young people involved in this project, and the last part that you heard was one of our young people who wrote that um, spoken word for the group that they presented in Raleigh. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Holly and uh, Ms. Bradley as well. Thank you all for all you do for our youth. <coughs> all right. Uh, next item on our agenda will be our administrative reports. Uh, the first one would be our county manager report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, you have before you the, uh, the county manager's report for July. I want to highlight a couple of things that uh, have gone on. Uh, we're implementing the budget as we speak. Uh, there are some carry forward actions uh, part of this agenda uh, for some budget amendments to carry forward some funds from previous years, uh, including emergency management funds as well as some capital improvement uh, type funds. Uh, we have onboarded an assistant to the county manager uh, position, and that was initiated and completed in July. Uh, we have acquired the uh, Department of Corrections property from the Department of Public Safety. It uh, passed both the, uh, the General Assembly and the governor's desk, and that has been uh, taken care of, and it is in uh, the county's hands. The deed is in, in the works and being processed as we speak. We feel like that that's probably three or four weeks away. Uh, there are a couple of operational things that we have worked on and will continue to work on. Uh, we have continued to work with emergency services on disaster preparedness and improving shortfalls that we have found or the plans that we have exercised. We're going to continue to tweak those plans uh, for debris cleanup and communications to ensure that we have a, a very well-worked, uh, well-planned uh, emergency response mechanism in the event of a disaster. Uh, we're working on sharing services with the school board and we're working to evaluate potential opportunities for improvements to the utility system in the county. Uh, we have worked and are continuing to work on courthouse committee uh, maintenance and operation of the historic courthouse uh, to preserve, protect, and enhance that structure for the usefulness of the, of the building uh, to the community. Moving forward, we look forward to uh, presenting uh, a sharing and collaboration and cooperation uh, of services with the school board and presenting that for the consideration of both bodies very soon. Uh, we also look forward to uh, several meetings that will be taking place, uh, the Ad Hoc Animal Control Committee, uh, as well as the NCACC Annual Conference in August. Uh, the library project is complete. The turnover process is complete. Final payment and reconciliation of the budget are being finalized. 
We resolved the HVAC issues uh, that had delayed the final payment, and that is complete. Phase one of the sewer project, uh, we're working with the county attorney as directed uh, to uh, complete that project as well. Phase two uh, is, uh, is being looked at as well, uh, pursuant to the discussion we've had in past meetings. Be pleased to answer any questions about the county manager's report or any of the other administrative reports uh, that you have in front of you. The only question I would have, and Commissioner Hoffa could probably better answer this, is our next courthouse committee meeting, when is that scheduled? Item D. 22nd, I think. Uh, yeah, I believe it's the 22nd of August. The 2nd of August. Yeah. 5.30. 5.30. All right. Any uh, questions or comments uh, for the county manager? If none, our next item will be our finance report from our finance officer. Have one budget amendment. Uh, is there anything other than a budget amendment? Mr. Chairman, the budget amendment is uh, for information uh, okay. only. Uh, what you'll find next in the packet is the personnel report. Okay. And that is uh, provided uh, pursuant to general statute for your information. The uh, agenda adjustment provides for the resolution appointing the tax administrator. Okay. All right. Uh, our next item would be our tax report from our tax collector. Good morning. Good morning. You have a copy of the collector's report there at your seat. Nothing really new to report on that. We are going into a new fiscal year. We are working on getting the 2013 bills out and they will be going out this month. I will ca call your attention down towards the bottom where you have prepayments listed a little over $8,500. That is actually 2013 taxes that have already been collected that will be posted against the bills when we bill them. Also, we received a little over $2,900 through Zacchaeus Legal Service foreclosures. And also, I believe I mentioned to you last week the motor vehicle interest that you had been seeing reported on this report we will no longer be sending to the state that is interest that will stay with us now and this month that was a little over four hundred dollars any questions in reference to this report okay if I, I'm sorry. I think it's a good time uh, I thought about doing this during commissioner's comment but while you're here uh, to make the public aware that there's a new uh, collection system for personal taxes which involves your motor vehicles. Um, and uh, this new system will require payment of taxes at the time you uh, apply or update your license or renew your license for your vehicle. So would you? The first of those bills went out during the month of July, and we are already having some people to go <coughs> to DMV that are getting their license plates, paying their taxes at the same time. We're also already having problems. <laughs> Nothing major, but we're, you know, everybody's working through it, and hopefully we'll get those straight. Um, we have had some people coming in the office just to make sure that they don't need to bring that money to us, that it needs to go to DMV. But any renewals that you have, motor vehicle renewals that start with the September renewals, if your renewal date is September the 30th or forward, those taxes will be paid along with the fees to renew your license plates at the DMV agency. And once a month, those fees will be coming to the county what is collected for taxes. And I believe in your, if you had, if you read through the report that I had turned in, we also had Senate Bill 305 out on the floor that has gone to the governor's desk to be signed in reference to the fees associated with that that the county 
will be paying, which really didn't turn out to be quite as bad as we anticipated, but we're being told we will probably revisit that next mm -hmm. year. Um, one thing, since we're on this subject, that I will mention, um, one issue that we have had pop up in case this happens with anybody or if you hear someone speak of it is when we received the records from DMV and, of course, there were issues with CITUS as far as address and whether they were just in the county or also the Kane in Caney, these were corrected in our office, the bills that went to the taxpayer are correct, the paper bill that you receive in the mail. However, when you get to the DMV office, they were not corrected in that DMV system. And what will happen there is just a phone call to our office. We can make that adjustment in real time where it's taken care of right then and you can go ahead and get your plates with no issue. And they're in the process of working on that. But um, we've had a few little issues to come up, but hopefully we'll get those ironed out. Any other questions in reference to that? Uh, yeah, Renee, I, what is in play, and I didn't realize this, that, that the DMV would actually be taking up Gates County tax dollars. Now, I knew that they would have to be paid, but what do we have from an internal control standpoint to reconcile that if the DMV is uh, collecting the uh, uh, amount for Gates County, that, it, that the state then in turn actually returns it to Gates County? We do have reports in place through this system where once a month we can see what fees have come out what has been renewed, the taxes that have been collected, and so forth. So when, now when these uh, the little tax cards are being generated, is the receivable being put on our books at that time? No. It is not? No. So how are we reconciling then from that standpoint that it, we are receiving those? It is not a real-time thing where those receivables are coming to the county. Like I say, those funds will be coming to the county once a month. And at that point, we will work with it in our monthly figures, just like we have everything else as far as reconciling with finding out. So we're on a strictly cash basis then from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still on the modified accrual. I understand it's still on a modified accrual basis, but. So, so and, I, and I understand that, uh, Sandy, but uh, I would like to know that I did have that potential out there and how we reconcile that if someone hadn't done that. So we now, now we do have the reports that we do know because that is one thing that we had requested. Right. And we have also, as of right now, we for ourselves are just comparing it against right. what we had done in previous years. So right. we do have that capability. I hope so, and I just hope we do that because, like I said, I'm, uh, hey, I've made plenty of mistakes, and it's always good to have that reconciliation so you know that you get those things corrected. And right. I don't know that I want to put all my faith in the state being 100% accurate. I'd no. like to have somebody. I can understand, <laughs> and especially when it comes to the DMV system. But anyway, yeah. we're... We're going to work through, and but we do have reports in place where we can, and we are with what we have already done, keeping those wow. records okay. and whatnot. Um, because of the nature of the conversation that you've entered into, I see some hands out here, so I'm going to ask these uh, people. Uh, Mr. Bailey, if you will stand, and yes, is this a question you're going to direct to Ms. McGinnis, I guess? Yes, sir, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopefully I can answer it. <laughs> Yes, you can, you can go to DMV just like you would renew your plates online now. Okay, so and no, 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 that, that has not changed at all. Ms. Howell, if you had a question.
Well, you, you did not, that has been corrected at this point. Okay, it was it was corrected right after the lady that was talking to her in our office got off the phone. She corrected it. Okay. Okay. Um, this was one that I was referring to that had the her your bill was correct. The paper copy of your bill that you received in the is the correct amount. Yes. And that is what it, I it wasn't. If do you mind me stating the approximate amount? The tax was I, I, okay. Okay, but the paper bill that you received in the mail was the the paper bill was or what went. Okay. If you would, Miss Ann, after the meeting, if you would not mind stopping by our office so we can make a copy of that bill so we can try and figure out. Okay. They told me that you didn't think about okay. If you, if you will, just stop by the office so we can make a copy of the bill to see what we can figure out exactly. But to my knowledge, unless something happened in there, it was corrected after she got off the phone. So, but these are just, as we call them, growing pains that we knew we were going to have. So. Well, with that, Renee Lamette, with what Ann just said, I cannot still bring that check to the Gates County Tax Office and pay it here. No. I've got to pay it through the And MD. also, from what we find out with Miss Ann's experience this morning, that you cannot, because I think the lady at DMV was thinking she could take the corrected amount, and we t that's what we first advised them to go so ahead and do, was take the corrected amount, but she was not able to take what is considered a partial payment. I think so that kind of that kind of bothers me more now because now I'm putting 100% faith in the in the state <laughs> to do all my taxes. But we the they are aware of the problem. We're not the only county with this problem. We talked with them yesterday about it because we had another situation yesterday, and we've also talked with them again today. The situation yesterday just so happened that the lady had not been to the DMV and called, but. Like Ms. Ann said today, we had, you know, a taxpayer at DMV wanting to pay, and they're going, no, we can't take this, and this isn't right. It's not the way it was sent in, and so. They also had one yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine, and from what we've understood, is every county has an issue. Right. We're just glad we only have two um, tax districts we're working with instead of 20 or 30. Okay. <laughs> All right, we just wanted to make sure our citizens are aware that this is something new and uh, it's probably going to be a little bit of a shock to some, but uh, this is the way the state has decided to do it and this way we have to do it. And if you, <coughs> what you may want to do um, is to go online to North Carolina DMV where you can renew your plates even if you don't intend on renewing them online, but you can, whatever information you pull up there, is going to be what DMV expects you to pay, which if it's different from the paper bill that you have, call our office before you go to DMV so that we can get that situation straight before you make that trip. Mm -hmm. <coughs> No, this is the license plate agency. Okay. It's where you go. All right. Uh, the next item is uh, if no more questions. Uh, we'll Thank you. If we have a resolution for you, uh, Ms. McGinnis. Uh, 
we have to pass a resolution, I believe, to uh, for you to take the oath of office. And the resolution states, this is a resolution appointing Renee McGinnis as tax assessor and tax collector to be served as Gates County Tax Administrator. Whereas Renee, Renee McGinnis was appointed by the Gates County Board of Commissioners to serve a term as tax administrator from July 1st, 2011 through June 30th, 2013. And whereas the Gates County Tax Administrator serves in the statutory roles of both the Gates County Tax Assessor and the Gates County Tax Collector, and whereas the Gates County Manager has recommended that Renee, Renee McGinnis continue to serve in the roles as Gates County Tax Administrator. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Gates County Board of Commissioners, as provided under Chapter General Statute 105-294 and Chapter 105-349 of the North Carolina General Statutes, does hereby appoint Renee McGinnis as Gates County Tax Assessor and Gates County Tax Collector for a term of two years, commencing on July 1st, 2013, and expiring July 30th, I'm sorry, June 30th, 2015, and that such appointments shall be served under the title Gates County Tax Administrator. In the County of Gates, adopted this seventh day of August 2013, the Gates County Board of Commissioners by Henry L. George, the Chairman. Uh, you have the resolution before you. Uh, we will entertain a motion to adopt the resolution to appoint Ms. McGinnis as uh, tax administrator for the next two years. So moved. Second. All right, moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. All right. The you will need to take an oath, as you're aware of, and uh, I think that can be done. It doesn't have to be done here. You can do it in front of John. <coughs> Next item will be our personnel report. And uh, I believe you have that in your package. Um, we only had one reclassification. The next item is our departmental reports. Are there any comments or discussion on any of the reports that were presented? I have one question. I say one. But on the uh, water department, <coughs> June 10th report. Under the first uh, item, it says 28,195,000 gallons of water treated and 27,969,000 gallons billed. That's a difference of approximately 200,000. Uh, what is the accountability for that 200,000 gallon? Uh, those gallons are from flushing, hydrant flushing, um, which are not metered or billed. Um, you also have your fire department, which is training for all the different departments throughout the county. Um, there's also flow tests that fire departments do and leaks and that that's the accountability of that difference as well as your broken meters throughout the county that aren't registering or dragging so that does include leaks and broken meter yes sir okay. the the gallons treated that's pulled off the master meters at the plant the gallons billed are pulled directly from the billing software out of the collections office so roughly two hundred thousand what would you say the cost of 200,000? I'm just for an estimate of figures. What is the cost of 200,000 gallons? 
I know it's right off the top of your head, but <laughs> very much. I agree with not not very much at all. Um, no, that's considering two, that's two thousand dollars. I mean, if you put it on the base minimum, two thousand. On base minimum, if you did it on the base minimum of one per plate. I mean, in other words, if you have a thousand of each household, okay. so you get three hundred times the ten dollar. Is it eleven dollar base or is it ten dollar base? Ten dollar base. Ten dollar base. Approximately a couple thousand dollars. But for your cost of water, three dollars per thousand gallons is what we bill for it. it you can't really use your base fee because your base fee is to cover your your standard cost that you have to have to operate for reading meters your fuel that that's your 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 base fee that really doesn't entail the charge for water because that's some flat. of that water a lot of that water might have come from a single location yeah, not right. spread out with base 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 yeah, base that's right so uh, out of this twenty-seven million nine sixty-nine, what was the total billing dollars, and what does that average out per thousand gallons? Anybody? Off I, top I hand? did not. I, I was asked. I'd be, I'd be interested in seeing that to see if there's any change in, of the mix of our usages of our customers. Mr. Hall, I mean Owen. Yeah, uh, Tim. I was approached this morning about a um, about a hydrant that is on a uh, a dead end road, more or less, almost like a street, maybe a um, quarter of a mile long. I, I passed that note on to John this morning. He's got the address and everything. So if you could Lankston get. Langston Lane? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got that call yesterday. Okay, good. Um, I have to get down there and flush it. That, that okay. was his concern. And that is not a fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. That's just a blow off. Okay. For the intentions of clearing dead end lines. Okay, very good. It's not a fire hydrant. All right, so you're already aware of it. Very yeah, good. I okay. They're about to flush it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very this much. This gentleman calls about once a year, and and he wants it flushed. Okay. Very good. Just want to make you aware. Yep. That that was brought to my attention yesterday. All right. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. All right. Our next item uh, will be our correspondence. Do we have any? Now the animal control recommendations is that coming under it uh, is mr chairman you have in your packet uh, a, uh, a memo dated uh, july 11th 2013 to the gates county board of commissioners from the gates county animal welfare advisory board there are uh, seven recommendations that are being made for your consideration i have talked with the county attorney and uh, it is uh, advisable for us uh, to sit down in cooperation with the Animal Welfare Advisory Committee and the county attorney, if the board is willing, uh, to look at these definitions to make sure that these ordinance changes are uh, permissible by state statute, to make sure they are enforceable, uh, to make sure the ordinance that is changed is uh, legal in all respects. And uh, the county attorney has advised me that he is willing to do that with the board, uh, with the Ad Hoc Animal Welfare Committee, uh, and we just want uh, the Board of Commissioners to be aware of that and to uh, sort of uh, bless that, if you will, for us to move forward in that manner. Uh, but it needs to, needs to be discussed. The intent you have, items one through seven, is very clear. What we also want to make sure is the intent of the committee is represented by the words uh, in the memo. There may be uh, a better way to do it than what is proposed, and, and not being attorneys, the committee needs that resource of the county attorney for at least a couple hours to, to understand what legal ramifications there may be, what legal opportunities may be that uh, they're not aware of or I'm not aware of. Uh, so it would be advisable if that, that could uh, be permitted to, to take place. All right, so it's your recommendation today that um, we authorize you to set up a meeting, either a workshop prior to our next meeting or something uh, where we can discuss these with our attorney and the ad hoc animal control committee yes sir all right board uh, any questions or comments on this well i just want to I, I think i made a similar statement the last meeting but i, I want to say it again because you brought that up um, i met with sheriff webb and went over a list of those seven bullet points and he was very helpful in talking about terminology and you know, making sure we get those things right. He was very supportive um, in um, 
assisting me with that, not necessarily the committee, but assisting me with that to information to take back. We're, we're going to talk about that uh, tomorrow night. But um, uh, he shed some lights on some things, you know, real scenarios, real on the street kind of things. And I think those are things will be very helpful in um, changing the ordinances or you know, the little nuances here and there. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. If I probably want to add to that list the robocall request for number eight um, for item 316 about the tethering. I think we, we should have a, a motion to uh, authorize the county manager to set up uh, a time for the commissioners to meet with the ad hoc committee and our attorney to discuss the implementation and the legality of, of these recommendations. So moved. Second. That's a moving second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay, John, you'll make that happen. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, our next item will be uh, articles of interest. I don't know if we have any. Yeah, we have one. Um, Commissioner F1, Commissioner Hora, you wanted to uh, yes. speak on the right. debt payoff? Yes, I sent you guys an email uh, last week before. Uh, week and as you know when we had our budget uh, that we had a line item budget of $150,000 in the budget as of the current operating revenues to pay down debt. Well um, obviously the budget period has started and as soon as you get started on something to buy, the and it is kind of ironic that uh, if you looked into capital project for the library, you see $150,000 that will be on the positive side on the close out. Now that's not from the project itself. What that basically is doing is reimbursing the county back for money that was expended out of the general fund for like people like LS3P. So the project itself is not necessarily uh, favorable, but we do have a favorable $150,000, which just happens to be the same amount as it's $150,608, I believe it is, that you would see on the schedule that was in one of our earlier papers. It's ironic that that happens to be right for the exact amount of money that we have in our budget. Well, in September, the last week in September is when our first payment is due on the DSS loan. Now, according to what Sandy, and correct me, Sandy, if I'm not exactly right, that BBNT would not allow that $150,000 to be applied against the principal on the library. And so we got to draw those funds down from our base loan. Now that's a good thing because our library is financed at a rate of 1.77%. The refinance on the DSS loan of where we can make incremental payments is at 2.89%. So basically what you're doing, there's no cash flow in, uh, change whatsoever here other than the month of when we close out the library versus when we pay it. So we got a payment of roughly $142,000 that's due in September. This extra 150 gives us the opportunity to make that incremental payment as the budget allowed in the debt service. That $142,000 additional payment will save us 60, right at $60,000 of interest um, and reduce our uh, potential liability out there and reclaim part of our asset that we have in the DSS building. So what I'd like to see us do here with this $142,000 or the part is the cash flow that's going to come out of the close out of the library fund and replenish the general fund for the money we're, that we're going to spend in the current operating revenue. So there's no cash flow uh, change here other than possibly a month. but. Go ahead and capture the $60,000 uh, 60, of savings. Now, it's about $135 a day of interest. If you do it tomorrow rather than 
September, the last week in September, it's going to be anywhere from three to four thousand dollars additional savings that you that we have to do that. And uh, so I just want uh, us to go ahead and tell the county manager and the finance officer to go ahead and act upon our budget line item and let's get it done and save the county and the taxpayers this sixty thousand dollars. And if I understand correctly, you're asking to go ahead and put the set aside hundred and fifty six thousand dollars towards payment of the debt on the uh, DSS. Yes, sir, and save sixty thousand dollars. As far as the hundred and forty one, that's, that's actually all we can pay. Well, I'm talking about the excess, what we perceive as excess in the library, uh, the completion of the library project, that's going to go back in general fund. Yes, that is correct. So cash flow wise, there's no, no change. It's almost like you never had a budget line item is what it might be. Uh, County Manager and Finance Office, do you all have any comments and recommendations for the board? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've analyzed this request. We've had it since uh, Tuesday, July 30th, and looked at it and talked with Commissioner Hora. Uh, line item 3910750 uh, does budget for this uh, to be done the current year uh, budget. Uh, the board has approved that budget. Uh, the money is available to do that. Uh, we anticipate in September. Uh, letting you all know that we have drawn this money down uh, from the library project and uh, having a budget amendment to allocate it uh, somewhere in the general fund, as, as was mentioned. Uh, but it is budgeted. It is uh, something that can be done uh, without further board action, uh, but it needs to be brought to your attention. It is a, is a large figure. It's a six-figure uh, uh, item that we're talking about, but it has been approved by the board. I uh, want to make sure that is the consensus of the board uh, and we can, we can move forward with that. Board. Um, and I think one of the things we, we dis discussed was, you know, were there some areas that we really needed to address prior to this payoff? And I think we used, initially it was $200,000, and we used $50,000 to uh, supplement what we had funded, some of the departments. And, um, but we don't see any imminent need for utilizing that uh, payoff, debt payoff money m right away? Mr. Chairman, it, it is a, uh, an issue with every department and agency, particularly the schools with the loss of their ADM money, and uh, it's a constrained budget overall. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the various departments and outside agencies and partners that we have could very well do with additional funding. However, in uh, future uh, years, it will not be sustainable to do that. Uh, the budget that was presented was balanced. Uh, it is uh, constrained. Uh, there is no doubt about that. It, it will be constrained in future outlying years. Uh, the schools will continue to be under pressure. Uh, this time, I'm not aware of any pressing needs uh, that, that need to be looked at. I do know that at the budget time, uh, there was a lot of discussion, and I want to bring it to your attention to, as a reminder that uh, we're going to have to monitor these agencies and these departments closely. Uh, because they are so tightly budgeted. Uh, but at this time in August, uh, we've only been through one month of the fiscal year. I'm not aware of any outstanding uh, issues uh, that, that need to be brought forward. Okay. All right, board. Commissioner Hoffman, do you have any comments on it? <coughs> well, I'm all for saving money mm -hmm. uh, uh, at, that, at this time. For my understanding is that um, we could do this at this time, for this one time, and we had talked about it last year when we made that one-time payment, that if we had funds again, we could do it or not do it as, t as we see it. Well, this seems like an opportune time to take advantage of it once again. $60,000 savings, that means that $60,000 down the line that we can have for all projects like for schools. Okay. So at this time, I'm uh, pretty much for it. Uh, it goes back to the, the budget that, that I talked about and I, that I did not vote for uh, because of taking that $200,000 uh, and you turn around and you, you use 50000 that you put back so it left 150 It goes back to that same, same thing what I say. We took money from different departments. One is from GITS where they've got to pay back money. 
Uh, the other was the water department, where he had some question on, on stuff, and I, I see he's already walked out. But anyhow, um, I, don't get me wrong. I, I'm for saving money, too. But we took money from other departments to make that budget balance. Um, and, I said, I, and I made the statement earlier at that same meeting, um, you know, you, you're going to spend this money somewhere else. But you took it from those departments. And you got to come back sooner or later and look at gets or look at the water department, possibly to put more money back into those departments uh, if they need stuff. Um, you know, get, GITS is, is a program that we get a lot, most of our money, well, Patrice, what is it, like 95% or, or more of our money is state monies. And we're going to have to cut services to, to different places that we carry our elderly in most cases. Uh, we're going to have to cut some of these services to come up with that additional money that was needed. Um, so I don't want anybody to forget that we've got to go back and look at these things later on. And you might have to pull it out of general fund. I'm, I'm for saving money, but I am not for cutting our different departments' throats either. Commissioner Hoyle. Mr. Hoyle spoke at me. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I see the budget as a whole. I don't. I don't fragment it quite uh, like some people uh, want to see it because it's a it's a holistic budget. You know, it takes all the departments to run the county. Uh, I see our budget as a Gates County budget, and this is what Gates needs, and this is what the Sheriff's Department needs, this is what the Water Department needs, and uh, and it is a constrained budget. And as taxpayers. Um, citizens the people paying the taxes they should feel good about that when you use that word constrained it's you know we're trying to operate um, uh, more efficiently and at a lower cost um, if uh, when we talked about the budget and we talked about uh, for example the water department we talked about unforeseen um, water breaks and things like that they're all unforeseen was my comment um, when those things occur even if we cut the water department's budget, we're still going to have to repair those lines. So the money will come. The money is there, and it'll be distributed as needed. So that's the way I see the budget working uh, operationally throughout the year. Um, it's good that we came uh, came in $200 uh, lower on the library. I think it needs to be stated again. Um, we spent fit, put 50 back in the in the budget as uh, Commissioner Hoffler uh, mentioned. Um, at sixty thousand dollars, John is saved over the the life of the of the loan, not not just in one year. Um, I made the comment uh, previous meetings uh, when Mr. Uh, Commissioner Hoyle made his presentations that that I would always be willing to revisit debt setoffs. So uh, at, at this time, knowing that we're going to support all the agencies that submitted their budgets, if they're they're county agencies, um, uh, this would be one of those times where we're revisiting the debt set off and I would be in favor of that. Uh, <clears throat> let me expand on what Commissioner Jernigan said. When you talk about a budget, you're talking about current revenues, current revenues and current expenditures. It has nothing to do with the general fund. We did not go get any money out of the so-called, quote, bank account. So in this case, we have $150,000 sitting right there on a loan that we have got to draw down. So if you go draw that $150,000 down, guess what? And if it went to the budget, it's not a balanced budget anymore because we got $150,000 more revenue than we do expenditures. So that's not the case here. So you take the debt service line and you pay that against the debt service. Now, when you draw down to $150,000, you put it back in, into that as a current revenue, so now you've got a balanced budget. You've taken care of your debt service. Nothing has changed, absolutely nothing from a cash flow standpoint, absolutely nothing. And we've saved $60,000 of 
of potential liability. And now, and a lot of people think this, that it's saved over determined loan. That is true. But the thing about it is, and I always look at it this way, up front, it's a true upfront <coughs> savings because what did you do with that $60,000 of savings? You put that into your asset, to your car that you bid. So if you had to liquidate it tomorrow, guess what? You got sixty more thousand dollars for it. So it is really, it is a current. It's an unfunded, what you have is an unfunded liability on your statement. When your car payment comes in, it tells you what your balance is. But that's not really what you owe if you wait. You're going to owe a lot more than that. So uh, there's a misnomer, and it's a, a theory thing, an accounting theory of what people, how people view it. But I look at it as a liability if I have it. So I'd rather take care, and I'd rather for my, that to be in my asset than I had for it to be in the banker's hand. I don't know about you, but I'd rather for it to be on my balance sheet rather than the banker's balance sheet. So I think it's a good thing, and, it, and uh, I'm all about saving taxpayers the money. All right. All right, thank you. So, Mr. Motion. Jordan, I'd like to make a motion that well, we go ahead. Uh, allow the chairman to oh, yes, make sir. a comment, if you will. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, I, too, like to save money and, and uh, like to pay off things as soon as possible if, if that's the case. But I'm also aware that, you know, to put this on a practical level, if you're going to have a certain quality of life, you're going to have to have some expenses and you're going to have some debt um, and kind of piggybacking on what Commissioner Jernigan said is that you know if we're going to um, cut some of our departments we have to be aware that you know we have to have something in place to try to address those those needs so I'm in favor of it but I, I, I think this is a unique situation uh, we need to be aware that we need to have these discussions every time we consider uh, debt payoff uh, because if the situation were different, we could probably would make a different decision. Currently, you bring up the excess in the library completion uh, expenditure line, and this almost offsets this debt payoff that we're going to do. So <clears throat> in reality, we can do it. Um, and if we do need to go into fund balance to address some of the department agencies' needs, uh, we're really not uh, 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 going into what we previously had. We, we have an, uh, somewhat of an excess because of what the, the library fund produced. And um, I would be in favor of it at this time. But I do also want to say that as a board, we need to be aware that uh, healthy fund balance is something we need. Amen. Um, you know, when we get at 23 percent, that's not a luxury. We can you know, have uh, emergency expenses uh, that can basically deplete that to less than 8 percent, uh, which we are required by law to maintain. So. You know, let's, I appreciate your desire to save money, Commissioner Horrell, but I do encourage these discussions and debates every time that we try to do this. And having said that, if, if you're prepared to make a motion. Yes, I am, but I want, I want to make one more comment, Henry. <clears throat> Healthy fund balance is great, and we need that. But remember it this way, let's have a healthy balance sheet. You could have went out and borrowed $20 million and have a healthy fund balance, but your balance sheet is not too healthy. You need to remember that. It's about balance sheet and not fund balance. Healthy balance sheet is what you need to have, not necessarily a healthy fund balance. I could make our fund balance Well, and, and I think there's, there again, that's a debate. That's right. Because there again, you're getting into what about my quality of life? That's right. And uh, so, but anyway, 
That's when you have the unhealthy balance sheet. All right. Are you prepared? Yes, sir. I make a motion we go ahead and instruct the county manager to fulfill the budget requirements of the debt set off tomorrow or okay. at the earliest. Uh, earliest convenience. Yeah, for the 140D, make two payments rather than one payment. Payment now. Is that right? It would be 150000 You would mm -hmm. make the regular payment that was budgeted um, and then the uh, additional the additional payment. Okay. And allowable. Sandy said we couldn't make but hundred and whatever the payment is. You can't make any more than the payment itself. That's correct. Okay. All right. We have a motion on the floor. Second. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that. All right. We have a motion to second. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to say one thing also. Mm -hmm. I seconded that <coughs> because I think it is the right thing to do. But I still want everybody on this board to remember we got to come back to these departments if they need money. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was that's that's my whole thing that I was trying to say a while ago. Okay. We've got to support our our other departments. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Our next item um, will be our public hearings. And our <coughs> first public hearing will be uh, the closeout of our CDBG housing grant. Uh, our administrator, Mr. Mike Scott, uh, we're going to need a, is here, if we have uh, questions. Are there any comments before we go into public hearing? All right, we'll entertain a motion. We go into public hearing. So moved. Second. 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 All right, so the motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 All, right. All right, we are now in uh, public hearing for the closeout of our CBD housing grant that was for $100,000 uh, to do a survey of the housing conditions in the county. A report has been made and is successful for the citizens of the county. Are there any comments from the public? All right, if there are no comments, mm -hmm. yes. This is for the um, the nuisance ordinance? No. This no, is, it's not. No, it's not. My apologies. I'll, I'll wait for that. All right. Okay, if there are no comments, we'll entertain a motion to come out of public hearing. So moved. Second. That's motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Um, Mr. Scott, did you have anything you want to present to the board before we vote on closing this grant? All right. You know, every all paperwork, I believe I've seen documentation that everything has been submitted to CDBG and it's basically closed out. Okay. All right. Um, we need a motion to close out the CDBG. Yes, sir. That is All correct. Right. We need a motion to close out the CDBG housing grant uh, that was awarded to the county uh, for the assessment of housing in the county of $100,000. So moved. Second. All right, so the motion is second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Okay. All right, our next uh, public hearing will be on our nuisance ordinance that we discussed our last meeting and uh, if there are no commissioner comments we'll entertain a motion to go into public hearing on the nuisance ordinance so moved second all right then motion second then we'll go into public hearing all in favor aye aye, aye. all opposed nay all right uh public we have issued a nuisance, or, nuisance ordinance uh, for county uh, evaluation and, and also for uh, uh, being able to address nuisances in the county. Are there any comments? Mr. 
give my energeticness uh, about this issue. However, I, I feel that this is uh, of great importance. Um, just for the record, Thomas Hill, 386 Daniels Road. Um, I've always been under the impression that less government is the way to go. When you start putting the power in the hands of the government, you open up a can of worms. Um, I would ask to warn you all about that, that this is um, tedious. I want to make reference to what happened at 386 Daniels Road last year. I want to make this very public. When I moved into the county and I married my bride, we moved in close to her family. To this date, my wife's antenna had been ripped off of her truck. My mailbox had been kicked over. The political signs from last year has been kicked over on video, thrown into the horse pasture next to it. There was a gunshot to the side of my house, and I decided I'd fight City Hall. I decided to run for county commissioner. My objective was not to win or lose. <clears throat> My objective was to challenge the good old boy system. I've had four wheelers in my driveway doing donuts. For the record, I have no problem with four wheelers. I, I think the laws need to be lightened up for that. But I think if they abuse the privilege with it, it needs to be having a harsher punishment. There is countless police records on this. Little has been done. I've spoke with Sheriff Webb himself. And to no avail, it continues. I took it to court myself and won a civil no contact order. That is the resolve of the leadership of our Sheriff's Department. To trust the leadership of the Sheriff's Department <coughs> with this nuisance I have a problem with that. My faith in the leadership has been shook. Here's my recommendation. If someone makes a complaint and the complaint is frivolous, I would ask that that complaint uh, be made to fine. Why are you going to waste county officials for frivolous complaints. I've told you all before about the board members uh, from the planning board coming to my house asking me to mow my grass when there was no need to come tell me. He apologized profusely and moved on. I made this aware to you all two or three meetings ago when you all were discussing having another board member. Now, the Sheriff's Department, I want to give open praise to its deputies. Officers, officers by the name of Hawks and Winslow, when they're on duty, I feel safe. They approach issues nonpartisanly. However, the leadership, eh, I'm shook. With this said, I can offer documentation, court records, videotape, and I'm sure that will all become available. However, I'm asking you all to tread very lightly on this issue. This is something that um, I'm not too happy about. Um, there should be no reason why a car drives up in your driveway, honks the horn at 2.30 in the morning when you have a diabetic daughter and a wife who works 24-hour shifts. Got a problem with this. But nothing has been done yet. Um, my question to you all would be that if you do go this route and set up an ordinance for the county that it's nonpartisan, that's first off. Second off, if there is frivolous suits, that they be made a fine. Third off, keep it out of the hands of the leadership of the Sheriff's Department. If he cannot be bothered to come to the Animal Control Committee how can we trust him with this extra responsibility? 
And mind you, the resources that he has is far more greater than his predecessor. I ask that you all tread lightly on this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you for your time. Uh, unfortunately, I just got a chance to review this uh, ordinance uh, since I, there again, was not at the last meeting. And I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask about it. First of all, uh, under section 8003, it says the existence of any of the following conditions on any parcel of land except bona fide farms within the unincorporated area that is declared to be Dayton. Okay, and then it, but it is, my understanding by reading this is it excludes certain farm properties from complying with this. If that farm property happens to be within 100 feet of any residential area, why should it be excluded? Can someone answer that for me? Okay, well, um if it's a bona fide farm operation, you know, many times the uh, grass and whatever understand uh, that. is for farm purposes right. as well as the accumulation of uh, sometimes what we call animal uh, discharge smells, right, waste that. smells and so forth. So, um, you know, we are a rural county, we are an ag agricultural county, and we don't want to jeopardize our farmers' ability to uh, be successful. Uh, but if it's a nuisance to the general public normally for anything other than a farm operation, why would it not also be considered a nuisance if it was within 100 feet of a farm operation? It's like <coughs> apples and oranges to me. Well, um, Mr. Jordan. All right, Commissioner uh, Hoffman. I believe if you uh, check with the laws of the state of North Carolina, farms are exempted from a lot of things. Oh, yeah. And um, that's just the, just the way it is, that farms are under protection by state laws. Okay. Mm -hmm. one, I understand one thing they have operations that they have to do, like, you know, like he said, compost piles, and, and uh, sometimes they'll grow grass to, certain height for pasture areas and things of that nature or grow it for hay but if it's considered to be in a, uh, a nuisance to the public health if it's within 100 feet of a rate of a residential area for everyone else why should the farms be excluded is it just because the state law allows them to do that you understand where I'm coming from with this oh yeah okay one, Mr. Chairman, if I may, mm, sure. uh, one example, uh, Doug, that comes to my mind is uh, when we go to mow our lawn, right. uh, it's compacted. And going out to, uh, after certain periods of rain or things like that, there are times when, when that farmer wants to get in the field and he can't get in their field I understand uh, that. to mow. So, I mean, that would just be one example. Right. Not, I don't think it's really isolated. Um, of course, there's, there's no teal you know, uh, cropping out there right. where they intentionally let, you know, the vegetation grow for erosion and other reasons. Uh, uh, so, I mean, those, those would be just two statements that I would address toward your, your okay. comment. I, I think I understand where you're coming from yeah. with this, but um, I'll give you an example of something uh, where I live at. Uh, there is a farm near there that uses uh, chicken excrement as a fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And when the wind is right, I'm telling you, yeah, all you want to do is go indoors and shut all the windows. Uh, some people may not consider that a nuisance. They may consider it a, ne a necessity of the operation of that farm property. But this is what I'm talking about. You know, if, if it's within 
close enough to a residential area where it affects that residential area, then there should be uh, something in the language of this ordinance that, that covers that, you know? Maybe, maybe uh, only doing the operation during certain times of the day or, you know, whatever. Um, I also notice in this <coughs> ordinance that there's nothing in there about noise or discharge of firearms or anything of that nature. Uh, would the board like to uh, explain as to why that was not included? Uh, we do have a separate noise ordinance. Uh, that covers that? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we have a noise ordinance. Okay, so this was not, <coughs> this, is a, this is a different uh, public nuisance other than the noise ordinance or the discharge of firearms ordinance. Right. Okay. <coughs> and um, we do not have a firearms ordinance, <coughs> but we have, I think with the sheriff, we've talked about it, and uh, that is something that possibly may be looked at at a later time. Okay. Um, right. I, I do think that <coughs> under section 80.3, well, we say land except bona fide farms. Uh, a bona fide farm is one that a person, that's their livelihood, basically. Right, exactly. Uh, Produces either livestock or a cash crop. Yes, right. and uh, so if someone wanted to have, you know, just a hobby, and right. I think sometimes we see that where it's, you know, and sometimes hobbies kind of supplement income as well, right. but but uh, it bona fide means that that's a, an operation that uh, provides a, uh, a substantial income of that uh, of that family or owner. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. If there are no other, yes. name is George Walters. I don't know if you all know what nitro cars are. Does anybody have a clue what they are? They're like a steroid or, or, a, or a, a weed whacker on steroids. And right behind me from here to that wall over there, they put up a track because the guy said they could. And they ran them things around and around and around. And when you call to get anything done, there is no law. Nothing anybody could do. So they come down, the police department, the sheriff's department, and we'll talk to them. As soon as they get out of sight, they're right back to block A. The biggest problem with this whole thing is you got these guys that are doing it. They're coming from Virginia. You know why they're coming from there? Because they can't do that there, and they can do it down here because there's no law to keep them from doing it. My wife went in for double knee transplant and couldn't even sleep in her own house. When I went out and asked these people, these young people, they said, what, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. Uh -uh, I'm not mad. And I got one more thing to say. I didn't really want to come here because I'm really having heart problems. But I'm going to tell you this. When you got an acre away and you got people coming from Virginia down here, and I've called bunches of times right here, shooting AK-47s, you got a problem. And they'll tell you point blank, there is no law I can do what I want to do down here. There's a big problem with this. I, and, and there's a guy that had a 50 caliber shot and went through and hit a house. You got problems with this. You made that down to residential and nobody cared. It's not normal in any place, and I went all over this state to shoot high power, and I'm not talking about a shotgun, but when you bring 20 of your friends down there and have a good day out here in the field, and you can't sleep on Sunday, something's wrong. And when you're shooting these kind of rifles out there, eventually somebody's gonna get shot. Something's gonna happen, it's just a matter of time. Everybody down there hollers and says, and the sheriff, bless his heart back there, you know what I mean? He says, there's nothing I can do because there's no noise ordinance. I don't know about you, and I don't know if any of y'all been in service, but an AK-47, an acre away, is a very loud piece of uh, artillery. Very loud, not a little bit. I'm talking about you can't hear your TV or nothing. And you know what's bad? There's, and I checked the state laws earlier. There should be a, a backstop. 15 foot high and all that, I'm looking at 10 cans. 
and the goofy idiots probably can't hit them. You know, and, and this is a bad situation down here. It really is. It happens all around my neighborhood. It's all residential. You got people acre lot, acre lot, acre lot. Isn't that right, Sheriff? And they shoot continuously. I call it 12 o'clock at night. They go back and have a, have a whatever. I don't know what they have. You know what I mean? And they go out and just go crazy. Okay. It needs to be addressed. You know, it really does. If it was out in the field, I could care. I don't know what, what is that road up. There's a road out there the guy has a backstop. You know what I'm talking about? has a door up there he shoots at. You know what I'm talking about? Goes down by a drinker. He has one. I'm, I got a problem with that. But you don't shoot that kind of stuff in a residential area. And they'll bring their friends down, and you know what I'm talking about, and they'll shoot all day and all night. People in Virginia, they'll load up and go home, have a good old time. And I put up with it every day. And I've got to the point I've had enough. Really, I have. I'm going to take them little cars, and I'm going to tear them suckers apart if I got to, right in front of the man. Because it doesn't make sense. All right. You know, that thing is loud. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. My name's Carolyn Riddick, and I'm from the Ewer District. And I hadn't intended on speaking, didn't know. It's been a long time since I've been able to be here. But I kind of put up with a lot of what he's talking about. I have a neighbor. They have a bunch of people come in from Virginia on the weekends, and they shoot, shoot, shoot. That's all you hear. We come home from church, and my husband was very sick. And a lot of Sundays I would leave him there, and he, I'd come home. He's just frustrated. He can't rest. He, I mean, you come home on a Sunday afternoon after church, you want to sit back and relax. And all we hear is gun shooting, and it sounds like they're ricocheting off in ten. And if they're not doing that, they're mud bogging. He's created a big mud bog by that. I don't mind anybody having fun, but have a little respect. At least give somebody peace on Sundays. And I've had to call the sheriff's department. And there's nothing they can really do, even though I've given them the hints. There's alcohol back there. They can sit on the road and catch them when they come out, but that's not solving the problem of the gun shooting and all the mud bogging on Sundays. So something does need to be in place so that people that we have a quiet little community in Kiney, we'd like to keep it that way. That's all I had to say. All right. Thank you. Yes. here listen to the, the citizens come forward on some of these complaints and Walter the only thing you said well ago about was a noise ordinance what well, we need is something about discharging firearms is what you spoke to me about as you all are aware it's not against the law to discharge a firearm in Gates County uh, and it has not been as long as I can remember 53 years old the situation that he's talking about and the other young lady's talking about that we do deal with that on a regular basis Right now, all we can do is go out there and ask them to please refrain from shooting them when they have to. Where we do get into, and we have had access with this in the courtroom, is charging with the noise ordinance after a certain hour in the evening. 10 or 11 o'clock at night, discharging a shotgun. Uh, we've got people in the community that love to play with little toy cannons. It's nothing but a black powder cannon. It just makes a big boom. We've dealt with those, and we deal with those under the current noise ordinance. Um, that we utilize because of it being, you know, uh, after hours and it's a set of noise where it's rattling people's windows a block away. We've actually charged people with that and, and a lot of uh, the stuff that they're doing these days, as you all are probably aware, you can go on the internet and find any bomb you want to. If you mix <coughs> aluminum foil with Drano and put it in a Pepsi Cola bottle, it's going to blow up. We had a young man that started out that way, then he moved to the two liter bottle, then he ended up with a five gallon bucket. When the five-gallon bucket went off, it was right on the windows and the neck stayed up. It was up there in Drum Hill. Am I correct, Walter? But we took care of that. It just took a little time. We took, we were able to take care of that because we were able to deal with that. Now listen to Mr. Hill back here talking about nonpartisan. Uh, when we do nonpartisan, we are nonpartisan all the time. We treat people just like they expect to be treated in every part of the, of the county. We can only make the laws and enforce the laws that are valid. We can't bend the laws to suit you. You came in here and you talked about me a while ago. That's fine. 
Everybody knows, and I know that you don't care for me. You never have. Uh, just a minute. But, just a minute. Hold on. You also were given the opportunity to come to court, which you were given. We served a process for you. We did everything that was required of the law. And those court proceedings, most of them were determined to be not guilty. And the cases were tried. They were brought in and properly tried in front of a court of law, in front of a judge. And they were found to be not guilty. We treat everybody the same. I don't bend the laws for one person. I treat them right straight down the middle. And anybody that knows me and knows me how I am as sheriff will find that out and knows that. There are certain things out here in the county that need to be addressed. You all have that responsibility to get out here and figure out what you all want to do as far as these ordinances. I know Mr. Jordan, Jack, different ones of us talk about the grass cut. People want to go around. Nobody wants to have somebody come up and tell them they need to cut the grass. But if you all request us to do it and start enforcing it, we'll try to do that. I've sat here and listened to the folks with the Alamacan board. Mr. Bay was in my office this morning, spoke to me about it and so forth. One thing he did say, though, that I just want to make sure that everybody understands. <coughs> he said that he had written four tickets this year. That's just from January to now. We hardly ever write more than eight to 10 or 12 at the most because most of the time, the citizens of the community work with us. If I come to them and tell them we've got a complaint, and that's what we deal off of is people making complaints to our office. If we have a complaint, we follow up on it and we look into it. If there's some type of criminal offense or some type of ordinance violation, then they're issued a citation. As Mr. Uh, Betty spoke of, we usually give a verbal warning, 90% of the time it's taken care of. We come in and we give a written citation. He referred to it as a warning, but it's actually the county citation that we issue. If they don't combine then, we come back with the state citation, which means they have to come in here in front of the judge in the black robe. And we have had them that have tried us to that point where they wouldn't show up for that citation. But when they don't show up for the citation, the judge issues an order of arrest. We go out and arrest them and they have to post a bond. And we have done that on several occasions. That won't show up on your citations, Mr. Bailey. That will not show up on your citations. Yeah. And just so you all know, gentlemen, I can take the numbers, go in and look and show you at any given time. Al Parker last year and consistently has answered more calls of this kind than any other officer that I have. He's ranged anywhere from 550 to 700 calls alone that he handles alone. I asked you to go and ask the surrounding counties how many of their officers have answered. And you'll find that we, we put more animals and do more for the community as far as animals than any of the three surrounding counties. It's, a, it's noted. John has had talks with our county folks with, this, with the uh, pounds. And understand that we do know that there's some issues over there. The biggest thing is room. And that's something that down the road we need to address. Sure. He left and he's not here, but just a few minutes ago I had a conversation with Mr. Tom Langston. And I heard some of the comments that he made. One of the things he came to was asked about what turn about taking the prison and turning that into a pound. That's something John and I have talked about. But you've also got to realize that's going to take money. You've got to be able to get it up to standards that's required by the state. It's just like he asked about putting prisoners out there. That's something that down the road we might consider. But again, I also know that Currituck County got the sister county, had a sister prison to this one. In other words, they're built the same time, built on the same basis. They had to spend almost a million and a half, two million dollars just to get the sewer system straight. And I know for a fact, because I've talked to the sheriff over there, that right now they have, sometimes they have bad weather, and they've actually had raw sewage come up in the sheriff's department because the sewer system's in such poor shape, but they've tried to make it work. So there are things out there that the prison could be used for. Yeah. But back as I said, if you all decide to make these ordinances and do them, we'll do our best to enforce them. But I can't believe, I cannot bend the law to satisfy certain individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. No one else? We'll. I want to go on record. Mr. Sheriff, I uh, gave no names with, uh, with the leadership of the Sheriff's hold, Department. Hold on just However, a minute. Let's make something clear. Uh, this is a public hearing to address the nuisance ordinance. It's not going to be a time of debate nor uh, personal attacks. Uh, so if you have something in regards to the nuisance ordinance to add, that's what we will will hear. But if not, we will move on. One last comment then. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't mention any names when it came to the leadership of the Sheriff's Department, but I'm glad I made it clear. As far as the problems that I personally had at 386 Daniels, these people, individuals, they were the ones that did this to my home, to my land, to my mailbox, to my driveway, to the side of my house. They self-proclaim that they are the supporters of the sheriff. Please don't tell me that there is not partisanship there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm led to believe otherwise. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to come out of public hearing. So moved. Second. All right. So motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. All right. Uh, we have before us a public ordinance for nuisances. And you heard the discussions of the citizens of what is the pleasure of the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, we've heard several issues this morning and, and I separate this from what I was hearing. That's noise versus this to me is more of an appearance type situation or a health issue of uh, someone had a dangerous chemical or something like that stored against my property. Uh, I think we need to address the noise situation that most of the people that were talking about. Uh, only Mr. Bailey had really addressed the thing about uh, the farms, and I do think we need to have uh, this number one farm should not be excluded if, and I'm not, t I'm talking about open land, it's a difference with a guy having a, a piece of uh, a farm, a tract that he's actually farming and the weeds have grown up and he's waiting to dist it or whatever to put it into a till situation. However, if that farmer does have a old home or a house there that he's storing things in and he's let it grow up around there and it's within a hundred foot of my residential property, I would like for him to have that cut. So I do think we need an exclusion in this uh, from that standpoint. Then, the, uh, in other words, like excluding number one. Well, would, would, could we, if we said, accept bona fide farms protected by state law, would yes, that? Yes, yes. And excluding number one there because, it, like I said, if he has a storage facility that's within 100 foot of my residential property, I want him to maintain that. Now, if except when protected by yes, state. Yes, that's right, yes. Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that we consult with the extension department or yes. uh, someone who is an expert in about what details a farm or not before we put in an exclusion or inclusion, whichever way you want to put it. I think we just need to get some expert advice because I know state law does, there are a lot of things that farmers can do that on a regular farm. And Mr. Jernigan might know more about it than I. No, I'm not a farmer. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you <laughs> work with a farmer. <laughs> um, I, I work with a farmer that, that tends our farm. Um, I know there's a lot of laws out there that it, they're excluded from. Um, and certainly we would know, need some, some expert advice on it before we go through this. Um, I've been up here, this is going on my eight year coming up. Um, and this has been discussed, I'm not gonna say every year that I've been sitting up here, but it has been discussed probably every other year. Somebody's grass needs cutting. Uh, so and so's not cutting their grass to suit me. Uh, and I found that, that, that that's is sort of the case that the, the next door neighbor doesn't like the tall grass. And personally, I keep my grass cut. I, I'd like to see my neighbor keep his grass cut. Uh, I like riding around in, in our neighborhood and in our community and seeing everybody keeping their grass cut or their yard presentable, I must say. I, you know, and everybody's presentation is different from mine. Um, but it has been discussed. I don't mind having something, but I sure want it to be 
within in the rules and regulations and the law. All right. Mr. Owens. John Owens. Um, there are laws uh, and rules where there are a lot of exceptions for farmers. And that is done for a reason. Those things have been researched and talked about year after year after year. <clears throat> and the experts have looked at them from the state level. The experts have looked at them. And the wording with the except for the exception of a bona fide farm in rural Gates County is sufficient. This, what, what I see here for this nuisance ordinance is sufficient for our rural Gates County. I, I don't think it needs to be changed. It's in there for a reason, for, for some of the reasons that we that we spoke about. You know, wet fields, you can't mow, um, no till, and I, you, I know you others probably have some in mind. But John, you did a little bit of research too when you, when you drafted this, right? Yes, sir, and I can tell you, uh, and I wanna make it clear uh, for the board and the public, North Carolina is a right to farm state, uh, meaning that we can't prohibit farming and we can't uh, do any sort of restrictions on farming that uh, are not allowed in the general statutes. Uh, as a matter of fact, the general statutes are very clear what constitutes a bona fide farm. There is a five uh, different category test and I'd be hard pressed to enumerate all the categories, but uh, one of them is if you have a farm service number or you have a tax revenue receipt showing that you uh, uh, have uh, the, the land and, and the land use program. Uh, so there are various ways that a bona fide farm is judged. It's laid out clearly in the general statutes. There is no local interpretation on it. General statutes are very clear. If you meet one of those criteria, you are a bona fide farm regardless of of what you're doing on your land and uh, the the, uh, the vacant uh, farmhouse structure being used for storage or hay storage is very typical. Uh, it does present problems for uh, for neighbors and uh, for communities. However, the general statutes don't also, don't allow us any leeway in that regard at this time. Things could change in Raleigh, uh, but at this time, the general statutes are uh, very clear. Thank you, John. Uh, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, I, uh, I asked John that because uh, I want the public to know that the reason we're addressing this nuisance is for the other things, the noises and and <coughs> and bad odors and things like that. Um, we're addressing this to help the public, and I, I really don't think that we need to let that first bullet point up there um, about the exception for the farm keep us from going forward with this. I think it's I think it's a good ordinance. And, uh, and I think we need to, to go forward with it. Um, and Mr. Chairman, if, I don't know if you're gonna have any comments after this, but, um, but I have a motion I wanna put on the floor after I hear your comments if you have any. Yeah. Well, I don't have much to add other than the fact that um, I think it's, it's fairly clear after having listened to the county manager, the explanation of it, I, I do uh, think there's some, some credibility and uh, making sure that the extension department don't have any input. Uh, but I'm not opposed to uh, moving forward with it as it stands, if that's the pleasure of the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Wait a minute, Horace has John. I'll make one more comment in which, <clears throat> and I said this last time, in which Mr. Hill made some comments to that. And this is, if you've been reading the news or you've been up to date, the IRS has been in the news quite a bit. And what happens to that situation is when people have power of authority and they step outside their bounds of their authority and make it unreasonable for people to comply with certain things. Well, this does fit that same type criteria. And what you ask yourself though is this, this is really a document between neighbors, citizens to treat each other with respect and dignity of the way that you would want it to be in the appearance <coughs> of your property or whatever that protects you. Now, there becomes times when people don't get along and you have to have things like this to intervene. Well, 
if they intervene and they exceed their level of authority, and Sheriff Webb was kind of addressing that, he can only do but so much to a certain extent. That's our job as politicians or lawmakers or whatever to is address those things. And we want everything to be transparent and reasonable. And that's what the approach is here to try to do that. It's not something to put constraints on that. Now, it could be that, but I think there's enough openness and transparency and accountability that we can do that. And that's what you're seeing is happening on the government level. There's a lot of people that haven't answered a lot of questions now, a lot of questions. And uh, that's the only thing, only fear that I have with this, but I think it's good that, that we have that. And, and you got a moment, it's sort of like, uh, was Mr. Walters has said, if you have no laws, people are going to do anything you want to. But if you do have a law in there, at least your public conscience of a person comes into play. Thank God for the Bible. If we didn't have the Bible, some people like, there's no telling what kind of things we might have. So, and, and other rules. And that, that's what they're for, is to try to put that conscious thing within a person's being that they have those. Now, some people have no conscience, could care less, have no respect for life, property, or whatever. But if you are a really a true, responsible human being, I think most people have that within themselves. And I think that's what we're trying to accomplish here. And, uh, and I'm in favor of doing this. Not that I, I like doing that. I think the intent is great. It may not turn out that way. Well, if it is, we had to make modifications to things. That's what we do as human beings. Our character, we make mistakes. All of us make mistakes. So, hey, I'm not too proud to say I made a mistake. And uh, so I, I think the intent's good, and I'm in support of trying to uh, take this kind of action and see if we can get there and see what the results are. We come back and re reevaluate. Commissioner right. Owens, are you prepared? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept this nuisance ordinance as presented. All right, we have a motion on floor to accept the nuisance ordinance as presented. I have a second. I'll second. All right, it's been motion and second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, we have a new ordinance, nuisance ordinance for Gates County. All right. uh, next item on our agenda be our new business uh, budget number one establish an internal service fund for the fleet services uh, you want to do all these at once kind of manager sure mr. chairman all right and number eight consideration of budget for amendment number two reallocating funds for social services and number three for the carrying forward of EMPG uh, and number four, carrying forward for the corporate extension funds and the amendment to the courthouse project budget in order to provide for the allocation of funds to projects as specified in uh, fiscal year 14. So, Finance, uh, Sandy, if you'll address 7 through 11. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, budget amendment number one is to create a fleet management fund. And it's something we've not done before, but it's to have fleet vehicles that departments can use, and this fund will manage the expenditures for that. Uh, number two is to budget for the phone system installation. Um, we had actually budgeted this last year, but the project was not completed by the end of June, so we are reallocating to cover it this year. Part of this money will come from state and federal administration reimbursement. Um, and the rest of it will be paid out of the Capital Improvement Program Fund. For any other departments, we would just pay it directly out of that fund, but the way DSS is set up, it needs to run through their budget so that we can be reimbursed um, from the state. Amendment number three is to carry forward EMPG grant funds that were received and have not been expended. Number four is to budget for both the new revenue for the SHIP grant and carry forward funding from that from last year. 
And number five, uh, with the annual budget this year, there was a $200,000 appropriation for the old courthouse renovation project. This amendment actually is for the project fund itself, not for the general fund. So the money was budgeted to come out of the general fund to go to that project. This amends that project budget to allow the use of those funds. And that is all. All right. All right, you have the budget amendments before you. Are there any discussions or questions? We'll do finance officer. If not, we'll entertain a motion to accept uh, budget amendment number one, two, three, four, and I believe what's designated as five. So motion. moved. Right, it's been motion. Second. And second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next item would be the consideration of a transit grant application for TTAP JARC. Okay. I guess it's good afternoon now. Good afternoon. <laughs> This grant was written, um, I guess, at the request of the representatives from NCDOT. These were some funds that we've also already requested some funds of. They had additional monies, and they called different counties and asked them to apply um, if they had any additional needs. This grant is written to allow people to go to work sites, to educational sites, not like two-year programs, but for certificate programs and anything that would be acceptable as a job-related service. Um, the, the service will allow us to get to different areas a little earlier. Um, and it will, what we're looking at is that we think it will help us with the morning route. Um, the morning route starts very early for people to get at 8 o'clock places or whatever, we start transporting in some instances there at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. So we are adding in this time to try to um, help with that. Um, the funds requested are, there's a 50-50 match, 50% um, of the money is for the grant, and it's a two-year grant, I should have said. Um, the match for the funds will be, will come out of existing funds, I guess I should say. Um, some of them are RGP funds. We looked at 6000 per year out of RGP funds. Um, some of them are contracts that we have with people um, like Vote Rehab, um, WIA, and Work First to take some of their citizens to different places. That's pretty much so it. So the county would not have to put up any upfront money for this? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've been made aware that in order to adopt uh, or approve this application that a public hearing is required. Uh, we would ask the board if it's your pleasure that we modify the agenda for item 12.1 to open uh, up for a public hearing. Uh, first we need to have your approval to modify the agenda to add a public hearing in into this uh, deliberation. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Do we have the advertising? It's been, it's, it's I'm told it's been, it was advertised. Oh, okay. Uh, second. All right. All right, so motion is second that we uh, modify the agenda to include a public hearing. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Um, any discussion before we go into public hearing? All right. Uh, We'll entertain a motion to go into public hearing for the TTAP JRC grant. So moved. Second. All right, so motion second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. All right, we are now in public hearing. Uh, are there any discussions on the uh, grant application that's been submitted before the commissioners for approval? All right, hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. Right, motion is second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. 
All right. Uh, what well, is the pleasure of the board for moving forward with this uh, grant application? I make a motion to move forward with the TTAP grant. Second. All right. So motion is second that we move forward with uh, the approval of the application. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Thank you much. Okay. Um, the next item is to re review a, re of a potential memorandum of agreement to consolidate public water systems with the purchase of the town of Gatesville public water system. Mr. Chairman, I'll be right back. Sure. We need to take a break, or do we? Uh, how do we want to? We want to break for. Can you have lunch? Leisure. But then we'd have to come back and pick up the. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to board to break for lunch and then come back and pick up on the agenda or to finish it up. I'd like to finish myself. Okay. All right. Um, you have before you a memorandum of agreement between the county uh, of Gates and the town of Gatesville for the sale of the town of Gatesville utility system. And as all of you are aware, Currently, uh, Gates will purchase water from the county, and they uh, do that. I believe they do their own billing and collections for water. But it is, it is their desire, and we believe that the county, uh, well, the county uh, feels that it would be more efficient and effective if we were to consolidate and take over those operations and do it as a county system rather than as a separate entity. And this MOA basically outlines what the agreement would be for the county. Uh, county manager, do you have any highlights you want to uh, give us on this? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I want to uh, uh, read uh, the purpose and the recitals very briefly and, and quickly so that uh, you can understand the, the, this draft of the uh, memorandum of agreement. Uh, we're meeting with the town, of course, uh, after we recess for lunch at, at 2 o'clock this afternoon in a joint meeting uh, to hear their uh, discussion and thoughts on this issue. Uh, but the county and the town find that local cooperation providing comprehensive services is a public necessity, that such cooperation will pro provide for increased uniformity in mandated services, development of consistent goals and objectives, and more efficient coordination, administration, and delivery of services, and that, as a result, the public health, safety, and welfare will be better served by the implementation of this agreement. And it says, whereas the town has a water distribution system serving the residents of the incorporated town of Gatesville and procures water from the county of Gates at a non-negotiated rate, and whereas the county and town operate both their respective water distribution systems as enterprise funds, subject to the rules, regulations, and other requirements, both environmental and financial as required under state and federal law, and whereas the county and the town believe the continued and sustained uh, operation of a combined utility system is in the public's interest. Now, for there be it resolved uh, that the town grants uh, the county and transfers, releases, and quick claims all right title and interest in the water distribution system for the town of Gatesville. What this does is it consolidates two systems into one PWS ID number. It gives us the ability to, uh, to maintain uh, a more unified system with reduced uh, environmental uh, checks that have to be done. Anytime you have two PWS ID numbers, you have two systems of, of testing. Uh, this would be a consolidation and a reduction in the cost of testing because you're only performing one test on one system. It also gives us the ability to uh, extend water uh, for economic development purposes as well as uh, uh, pressure requirements for the southern end of, of the county and to just be more interconnected. Uh, the residents of the town are also residents of the county, uh, and it would enable us to serve all the residents uh, with a good quality uh, drinking water distribution system. All right, thank you, uh, John, County Manager. Uh, in adopting this resolution, <coughs> apparently uh, that's gonna allow us to consummate this agreement, but I understand that we're having a, a workshop with the town of Gatesville. So what sequence should this be done? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This is a draft resolution provided uh, in advance of the meeting uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock. It is a draft. We certainly can make any changes now or at that meeting. It should not be adopted now. It needs to probably be adopted in a joint session with the town. 
The town's been provided with copies, and it was prudent to provide the board with copies as well. Uh, that way everyone is uh, looking at the same, uh, the, the same data. We're all on the same page, so to speak. All right, we've uh, been briefed on this. Any discussion or comments? We're going to come back to this later. Uh, and I guess at that time, we can, if we want to make any amendments, we can. All right. Uh, next item is consideration of a resolution proclaiming National Health Center Week. Um, as you know, we, uh, our community health center uh, is, a, is a part of the health community that provides services for Gates County. And as such, uh, we've been asking, and I believe as a board, we agree that that recognition should take place the resolution says that whereas America's community health centers are at the core of our health care system and the nation's safety net, delivering high quality, cost effective, and accessible primary and preventive care to all individuals regardless of their ability to pay, and whereas health centers are located in medically underserved under areas and locally controlled by patient majority boards, making each health center responsive to the needs of the individual community it serves, and whereas health centers offer patient-focused, coordinated health care as well as preventive and primary care that families and individuals need and where and when they need it, and whereas health centers employ more than 9,500 physicians and more than 6,300 nurse practitioners, physician assistants and certified nurse midwives, along with social workers, case managers, and community health workers as part of a multidisciplinary clinical team designed to treat the whole patient, coordinating care, and managing chronic disease, at the same time reducing unnecessary, avoidable, and wasteful use of health resources, and whereas National Health Center Week offers the opportunity to recognize America's health centers, their staff, board members, and all those responsible for the continued success and growth of the program since its creation almost 50 years ago. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Gates County Board of Commissioners proclaim the week of August 11 to August the 17th, 2013, as National Health Center Week to recognize the partnership between America's health centers and the communities they serve in the County of Gates adopted this day, 7th day of August 2013, uh, Gates County Board of Commissioners uh, by the Chairman Henry L. John Jordan and John Mendenhall, Clerk of the Board. Right. What is the pleasure of the Board? Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we adopt this resolution. Second. All right. The motion is seconded. We'll adopt the resolution uh, recognizing National Health uh, Center Week. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Um, the next item we have is an agreement between the North Carolina Forest Service for fiscal year 2014. County Manager, would you uh, discuss that, please? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is the annual operating agreement that the county enters into with the North Carolina uh, Forest Service. They provide integral fire protection and uh, uh, natural area management for uh, forested areas, woodland areas of the county. Um, this agreement is a, a continuation of previous services provided uh, annually. They come before you and ask for a, a new agreement, and uh, the county does cost share in this agreement. Uh, the total uh, cooperative appropriation is $157,142 dollars, the state providing 65 percent of that, $102,142 and the county providing 35% of that, $55,000. This is appropriated in the budget uh, and meets the budget appropriation for FY14. All right, any comments? What's the pleasure of the board? I make a motion that we accept this um, agreement with the North Carolina Forester System as so stated in our budget. Second. Actually, motion is second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Next item would be uh, the consideration of an agreement with the North Carolina 
911 board. I believe that is uh, Billy. Uh, Billy, did you want to make some comments on this? Okay. Uh, John, would you elaborate on this one as well? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This item prevent, uh, presents for the board's consideration an agreement with the North Carolina 911 board to upgrade the county's existing emergency communications E911 system through a combination of grant funds and county 911 fund balance. You'll find a copy of the agreement uh, available to you. Uh, this is just a, a grant agreement uh, with the North Carolina 911 board and will allow us to upgrade our, and, and build a, a, a better, more enhanced, more robust 911 system with new technology uh, and new equipment. All right. What's the pleasure to board? I may make a motion that we accept this agreement also with the nine, uh, NC 911 board. Second. All right, so motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. Uh, next would be our comments, um, citizens' comments, uh, and if none, our commissioner comments. And um, if none, we'll entertain a motion to recess and come back for closed session. We'll recess uh, until two o'clock joint meeting with the town. We're going to do your closed session after. Yes. All right. We'll recess until 2 p.m. and we'll come back and have a joint meeting with the town of Gatesville with their uh, uh, officials. Um, one suggestion, what time is it now? 20 past 12 to right. Yeah, a closed session probably would last long, would it not? Uh, closed okay. session. Okay, all right, that's cool. <laughs> Do we need to? They won't be here until 2 o'clock. That is correct, yes, sir. Need a motion? Okay. Yes, we, we, need a, we need a motion to recess till 2. Okay. Well, so let's talk about this a minute. Um, if we are finished earlier, we I could go into closed session and then come out of closed session and do 2 o'clock. Yes, sir. I believe the uh, cooperative extension indicates that it's an hour, hour and 15 minute program uh, thereabouts. So, and you so get a could. walk to the cooperative extension building. So we'll just recess until um, and after lunch and reconvene. Chairman, I move that uh, we recess until after lunch and reconvene. All right. A a second. Second. All right. It's a motion second. Uh, we recess and reconvene until after lunch. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. All right. Thank you. Commissioner meeting. Uh, the next item on our agenda will be to go into closed session. We need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Second. All right. The motion second to go into closed session. All in, in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. <coughs> we are now in closed session. So moved. Second. All right. So the motion second. All in favor, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. All right. We're out of uh, closed session. Now we will resume our commissioner's meeting where we have a meeting with the uh, Gatesville Town Council. Yeah. Uh, John, I'm going to turn it over to you. And. Uh, guide us to where we want to get to. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and uh, the honorable members of the Gatesville Town Council. Uh, Mayor Winslow, at the end of the table, uh, welcome you all here. Uh, we, of course, convened this joint meeting to talk about a uh, memorandum of agreement uh, with the water distribution system of the town and the county and the consolidation thereof. Uh, I'll read that agreement uh, for the record. And be pleased to answer any questions and, and turn it over uh, to the, the mayor and the chair, respectively, for, for discussion. Uh, this is a memorandum of agreement between the County of Gates and the Town of Gatesville for the sale of the Town of Gatesville utility system. This is a bill of sale agreement, henceforth agreement, between the County of Gates and North Carolina County, hereafter County, and the Town of Gatesville, a political subdivision of the state of North Carolina, hereafter Town. The agreement is made pursuant to the North Carolina General Statutes 153A, uh, for counties and 160A uh, for cities and towns as amended. The County of Gates and the Town of Gates will agree as follows. 
the county and the town find that local cooperation for providing comprehensive services is a public necessity, that such cooperation will provide for increased uniformity in mandated services, development of consistent goals and objectives, and more efficient coordination, administration, and delivery of services, and that as a result, the public health, safety, and welfare will be better served by the implementation of this agreement. Whereas the town has a water distribution system serving the residents of the incorporated town of Gatesville and procures water from the county of Gates at a non-negotiated rate, and whereas the county and town operate both their respective water distribution systems as enterprise funds subject to the rules, regulations, and other requirements, both environmental and financial as required under state and federal law, and whereas the county and town believe the continued and sustained operation of a combined utility system is in the public's interest. Now, therefore, in consideration of the foregoing recitals and other considerations set forth herein, it is mutually agreed to as follows. Number one, the town hereby grants transfers, releases, and quickly claims all its rights, title, and interest and to, and to the water distribution system described and depicted in Exhibit A hereof, which is attached here to and made a part hereof, located within the incorporated town limits of the town of Gatesville and in the land immediately adjoining. Number two, the town hereby grants, transfers, releases, and quit claims all of its right to own, operate, or maintain water and wastewater utilities. Number three, the property described in this agreement is transferred without warranty of any kind. The property is delivered to the county as is, where it is, and the town makes no warranty as to its usability generally or as to its fitness for any particular purpose. And this agreement shall be effective on October 1st, 2013. In the appendix A is for the water distribution system and is a description of that system. The water utility distribution system is any building structure, facility, pump house, pumping station, metering station, reducing station, lift station, containment vessel, catch basin, reservoir, outfall, vault, or similar improvements, pipes, lines, service connections, conduits, tanks, feeders, wires, fixtures, ducts, manholes, handholds, hydrants, valves, cables, equipment, including but not limited to process equipment and any necessary devices, documents, databases, spreadsheets, plans, specifications, or manuals used for administering, operating, maintaining, supplying, distributing, treating, storing, containing, or conducting any water utility service, including the rights of way, land, and real property held in fee simple or by prescription for the same. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, that is the uh, agreement before both boards today. Uh, Mayor, Winslow, I, we, we look at this as somewhat of a win-win that's the way we were kind of looking at it. And uh, I know you all put a lot of time in it and thought, but, uh, you know, certainly, you know, anything you want us to know or, or how you feel about it. Uh, I'm very pleased with the agreement. Uh, I, uh, we find it with, with a small town and we have like 170 or 75 water users, it becomes increasingly difficult basis to maintain the water system. Uh, we uh, don't have a full-time operator. <coughs> we, have, we hire somebody part-time to do that. Uh, it got to the point where we couldn't afford the test on the wells and things with no more people than that, so we started buying our water uh, from, the from the county, uh, and there's a duplication. Uh, you, start, you, you test your water, and, and it's passes all the tests, and then when it comes into Gatesville, we have to test it again. Uh, every test that you perform, we have to perform as well. Uh, and it just, it's, it's just to the point where it's, we're losing money on the system. Uh, it just, the, the red tape and, and the tests and things that have to be done uh, are, are the same thing for a small system as it is for a large system. And uh, we, we appreciate uh, your consideration in this matter. Right. You know, one of the things uh, and, and other commissioners have chied in that we were concerned about is, you know, what would be the liabilities on taking on this? And I think we've looked at the liabilities and, you know, as far as the infrastructure, what we might have to do in the future and so forth. But I think in the long term, you know, taking on the customers and, and equipment, whatever, that's, you know, it's, it's a win-win. I think in the long term. We feel like it is as well. But uh, any of the, anyone else? Board when, or? Uh, when did this water system actually come on line? The first phase of it was about 1970, 71. So the county and, and this were all happening just about the same time? No. No, we, uh, we had a water system a long time before the county did. Uh, it was, like I said, 
1971 is when I moved back to Gatesville, and I was one of the original. I, one of the original. Uh, I hooked yeah. up with it. Uh, the county came about 77, something like that. Because I 79. Had, Yeah, and I thought about seventy-seven. So we were we were uh, in, the original was was in right in Gatesville, and then we added on from out there about where the cemetery is out to where Freddie lives now. That was added on as a second phase, uh, and we and we also added on down Willie Lane when we annexed that little area as well. Well, originally, <coughs> reason water system came to Gatesville, my understanding, we had no water. Had full sewage, mm -hmm. and that was step one in the grant process. If we got to find water, then we would add on the county sewage. But we have tried a couple of times since then, and just not big enough or strong enough to do it. Uh, and all over the state of North Carolina, <coughs> as the caps and all down the Drinking Water Act got stricter and stricter, it put most small improvements, small oh, yeah. uh, water people out. Mm -hmm. So, just like I said, our testing for the two wells. Is about eight thousand more than we bring in all together. We would lose eight thousand dollars if we had to keep well. So that that eight thousand dollars would be eliminated with the consolidation of it because you're not. We we had to do away with our wells. That's why we buy water from the yeah. county. We couldn't even afford our own wells at the time. They're good wells. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with them. But because of the volume, we weren't taking any volume out of them, enough volume out of them to pay for the testing mm -hmm. and. Discussing it with the the uh, state man, you know, we talked about turning it over to the county and all, and uh, he thought that was a great deal, a good, so, good thing, and so it was happening all over the state, right. and he didn't see anything wrong with it. So well, your two wells are still good? Yeah. yeah. The well's good. So that might be something. There are two well sites. There's one uh, up there where the water tower is That's now. That's been yours. Yeah. Right. yeah, and then there's one. Uh, there's a separate one behind Bubba Bundy's shop back there in that field. Right, they had, they're still there, they're still intact, but they've been physically disconnected because that's part of the, we can't be, we can't have that well hooked up, we can hook up the county water. But all we did was take take the valve out the cap we can, okay. you know, we can be hooked that back. So was the enterprise fund, uh, I, obviously I guess it was has been profitable all the time, was it, is, you said you're losing now? Yeah, we yeah. It was, <laughs> until, uh, but until then uh, y'all raised your rates, <laughs> yeah. so that's and that really we we were just about we were about breaking even. So y'all billing the Gates can't the uh, Gatesville residents at the same pass just a pass through then right. Just pass right through there. We were trying to make loans. So uh, have you depleted your fund balance in that? Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Timmy, can we use those incorporated in the holes? Into the uh, we do have. I, I told John we do have uh, somewhere between nine and ten thousand uh, dollars in deposits that people have right. put with the town to to hook on. Mm -hmm. When the first water system was first set up, uh, <coughs> they were just trying to get people to hook up, so it wasn't anything to hook up. Uh, as we got to running the system, we found that people that moved in town, new people that moved in, a lot of times they would move out and, not, and, and leave a balance on their, their water bill. Uh, so we instant, we, we charge $75 a hookup and keep the money uh, in escrow. And then right. if somebody leaves and they haven't s satisfied their water bill, uh, we, our cutoff keeps it down to about less than less than $75 so mm -hmm. we can uh, we can get our money back from them and then give them the remainder of it. <coughs> well, I think with what Bud said is exactly right. That's happened across it. Uh, in any operation today, a small business has tremendous challenges. And uh, the deeper somebody's pockets are, the better they can absorb such well, a situation. Well, if, if you've like got that. if you've got a bigger system and more volume, That's you right. can you can deal with it. If That's you're correct. if you're small and you don't, it's just like we used to we used to pick up garbage in the town of Gatesville. We had our own garbage truck, uh, and we had a, a man part time and, and a helper part time. Well, we were paying for a garbage truck. Uh, now, with the with the cost of what a garbage truck sells for. 
we were going to have a garbage truck that worked one day a week, and the rest of the time it sits idle. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. In this That's day right. and time, as much as equipment costs, it has to roll. So, so we contract our our garbage collection to waste industries, mm -hmm. uh, and and we also do have curbside recycling in Gatesville, but we had to get rid of that. Somebody asked me, said, well, what's your budget? I said, our budget's less than, less than $200,000 a year to run the town. We don't have a full-time employee. Uh, yes, you do. You just don't pay it. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm looking at four of them right here. <laughs> uh, so, it, you know, it, 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 like you say, it becomes increasingly difficult yes, in a small town to, to maintain uh, services and to to do that because the red tape and, and well, I understand with with uh, drinking water uh, quality, certainly you don't want to be drinking dirty water. You don't want to be drinking contaminated water. Yeah. So it needs to be tested, but sometimes I think they over test stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, and council and board, um, it looks like that, you know, we're all on board I believe the procedure and process would be that we would get a motion from our board <coughs> to enter into a contract with Gatesville and then you all would need to, we would vote on it and you all would need to do the same um, to agree to enter the contract with the county. So, uh, further discussion? Yeah, well, that contract being taking ownership. Right. That is correct. Now, yes, I, and I talked to John, there's one thing that we, we do need access, we've got a, a building up there inside the fence at the water tower uh, that where we store our Christmas decorations <laughs> and stuff like that. that. <laughs> we do need, we do need, we'll transfer a title and everything to you, but we do need a long-term lease on so, that. So, Elson, <laughs> Memorandum uh, of with, what yeah. with what you were we're telling me, that if we take this over, this project that you're losing money, out. you can buy a new Christmas decoration? No, <laughs> I wish we could. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> I wish we could. Okay. Uh, we, tr we, we have trouble coming up with the money to buy replacement bulbs every yeah, year for what we've got. Uh, uh, but no, I, yeah, I don't think it's appropriate for us to vote on it now. We need to vote on it during our regular meeting, but we'll be meeting tonight at, at 7 o'clock, 7.30. Uh, and I think I can say without reservation that we will we'll vote to, to accept this agreement. One of the largest concerns we have, we'd, we'd love to take the system over. It would expand our system. And as far as sampling goes, um, I, I, I see where you're coming from. We're, we have four times the regulations as Aquafino selling bottled water to the public mm -hmm. as far as drinking water. Um, one of our biggest concerns, and it has been a concern throughout the past, is addressing the, the asbestos line pipe. With our current staff, we have no training uh, none of our hardware and our supplies and our inventory that we keep in stock match up. Um, we're not properly trained for dealing with asbestos. Um, I just recently got a waiver for the county water system, so we only have to test for asbestos uh, every decade um, because we do not have those materials within our system. And it is a very expensive testing process, and that's probably 40% of y'all's testing is your asbestos sampling. Bud? Yeah, we, we were down to once a decade also, and I think that's just about, just about $300. They, they gave y'all reduced monitoring with the asbestos line pipe? Because there, there has never been, and Fred Hips told me that himself, there has never been any asbestos discovered in the water. Because it never has, because as soon as you put it in, it gets coated with the natural um, stuff out of the water, and you never see it. The only time that there's if you disturb it. Right. And we only have one piece of cement asbestos in the in the uh, in our system and that's the piece that ten inch comes from the water tower down to the corner and goes down uh Maybe. new road. You, you, road. Your main trunk line is uh is uh P V C and we we they you know 
everybody, it's very popular, believe it or not. All Raleigh Chapel Hill, all your big cities are loaded with it. And all that stuff is readily available to me. The adapters and stuff, you can buy, you know, if you want to hook up to it, they make a sleeve that goes right up to that, press it, and print some. We got them. It's very simple to work with. Do you, do you have those, that stock and inventory? Because one yeah. of the big things is we're going to have to go through training in order to. The only difference, only difference is considerable to make them. The OD. And you, have, and you have that over the years anyway. You know, you got duct cord, you got different things and different. You just have to know your diameters of which one of them. You can get all over that damn city. Do y'all keep any of that in inventory? No, because we're too small. <laughs> we, got, we, we don't got, we don't buy anything to fix anything until it's broke. No, we got we got some. We got a few pieces. We got. Uh, I mean, we don't. We don't keep a lot. Right. We got. We got emergency system. Well, uh, we got adapter fittings and stuff like that. But no, we don't have a whole lot. We, we I have been in more than one hole filled fixing a water main. Mm -hmm. But it, it's uh, it's a um, nominal doing it by nominal. The same thing as the repairs we have, it's just different materials where we try to keep inventory to, to do any repair. Because um, I know the last one I helped y'all with right there in Gatesville. And I guess the next thing, uh, as far as Diener and, and going off of one PWS ID number, um, this is more geared towards the commissioners. Where do we stand with that transition with NC Diener and, and merging these two systems under one PWS ID? I, uh, where do we stand? John, where do we stand? Is that an issue? No, that is not an issue. Uh, PWS ID numbers are consolidated uh, routinely. Uh, it would be premature to consolidate them now until there's agreement in place to acquire the system. I, I'm, I, I know that. I was just asking where do we stand as far as Diener's involvement in, in making this merger happen, as far as uh, the changes it might make to our sampling regimen, because I know we're not going to have to pick up your sample regimen if it's merged into one, but it might affect the so it shouldn't affect my back tees off of 175 connections, but it's probably going to, with the merger, a lot of times you kick back to a, a standard monitoring just with those mergers, and I'm curious to see if it does any changing as far as our sampling regimens that we have to do being we're merging two systems. Well, you probably want to check into that. seems like this is something that's, you know, even endorsed across the nation, you know, merging smaller counties with, with uh, st uh, municipalities, if you will, with, with towns and counties. Well, I would think, uh, Diener's well aware, I'm sure, that you guys are buying water from us. So, yeah, well, so, sure. so it's a matter of the gavel goes down and we're yeah. one system instead of two. Yeah. That's right. Let's move fast. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. Let's right. so, you know, we're not. It is. It's not like we don't need it anymore. Right. I mean, you know, it's all. It, it's still going to be out. I mean, it's still going to be out. You're still going to get water at the end of the day. Yeah. You going to get water at the end of the day. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. But Freddie's not going to have to read the meters. <laughs> and, and we're going to send the check somewhere else. <laughs> and you're not going right. to have to do the billing. And you're not going to have to do the billing. We're not going to have to. You know, uh, we we do. Uh, uh, you know, we have to do that that water quality letter just like y'all do. Uh, it's it, it's a duplication of everything. I you know I, I just. We'll waste the taxpayers' money and damn it, I do. And and we do we do anticipate that you all would you know some advice that may be needed administratively or whatever. Uh, that everybody's accessible to support that. All right. Well. Are we ready to move forward?
Well, as the, uh, the commissioner from the Gatesville district, Mr. Chairman, uh, I put motion on the floor that we accept this uh, memorandum of agreement to um, take over the Gatesville Township water system. I make that in the motion. Do you want to give them a covenant to uh, access the Oh, yes, the house? and include the, the access, a covenant access to the building up there where the Christmas decorations are stored. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I second that we don't motion. Want, we don't want to mess up Christmas. I second that motion. All right, it's been motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, uh, Mayor, you have one half of it, and I'll we'll turn have it over the other you. half. We'll have the other half by 7:35 tonight. <laughs> all right. That will be item number one on our agenda. Okay. All right. But um, I, you know, I, as I said, we're all here and all in agreement. We we uh, we all had a chance to look at the agreement before we came in here to meet. We had sat down and talked about it, and, and those are the things that. Uh, you know, we're, we're very satisfied with it and, and think it's going to be, as you say, a win-win for all of us. Uh, it'll, it'll certainly reduce our situation. Uh, it'll give you about another 170 or 75 users. Uh, it will allow you to run the water line straight through Gatesville. You can connect it across the creek, and I think it will improve the water quality for the people out that way. Uh, you know, because now I guess the people uh, out there by Gates Custom Mill and the water has to go around and come back, doesn't it, Jimmy? Yeah, it's, it's under there, right? It's moved to a flat branch. That turtle roots can die in. Um, so, it's a six inch main and they said it was. That's the same thing at your house, isn't it, Fred? Yeah. So that water two hours, two hours old by the time they get it. Yeah, it's so is, is Mr. Luth on the county system or the county? On the county. county. Okay. The county system. Right there at the corner of my yard, all right. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you all, and uh, we look forward to doing business. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. All right, good day. It don't matter. Anyway. <laughs> Chase, you ready? Are you? Yeah. No, to come back in the closed session. No, nope. well, we got to go back in the closed session. All right, we need a motion to go back into closed session. So moved. Second. Uh, let me restate that, if you will. Need a motion to go back in closed session in accordance with North Carolina General Statute uh, 143, 318, 11, A, 3, 4, and 6. If you will do your motion again. So no. move. You, you start it. Okay. <laughs> I so move. Second. All right. It's been motion second. A recording closed session. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. <laughs> okay. We've come out of closed session. So move. Second. All right. It's been motion second. We've come out of closed session. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. The uh, first item that we have is to. Uh, we need a motion to authorize the county manager to move forward with engineering services as discussed in closed session. So move. Second. All right, motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, the next item uh, we have is to uh, amend the agenda under item 9, make this 9C. Uh, to nominate a replacement for the ad hoc animal control committee uh, for uh, the resignation to replace the resignation tendered by Ms. Lulu Ralph. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we amend the agenda to address that matter. Second. All right, so motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, the floor is open now for nomination of the Gatesville. Commissioners, 
replacement. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to nominate Deborah <coughs> Loudon uh, to serve uh, the remainder of that term on the Animal Advisory Committee. All right, we have a nomination on, on the floor. We have no other nomination. Mr. Chairman, I'm making my motion nomination be closed. <coughs> second. Right. Right. Motion and second nomination closed. I'm said one name. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, no. Uh, I need a motion to nominate Deborah Loudon as a member of the Ad Hoc <coughs> Animal Control Committee. So moved. Second. All right, motion is second. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right, she'll be notified, uh, Mr. County Manager, and uh, Jack, I think you'll give her a call. I will. All right, if there are no other uh, items to, to be addressed, we will entertain a motion to a to recess until our August 14th, 2013 uh, commissioners meeting with the school board at 5 p.m. So moved. Second. Right. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank you. <coughs>